Today on The Cooligans, a big, big episode. We're very, very excited about it. In the first segment, Caleb Porter, where are you going, man? You're still, everybody loves you, man. Don't go anywhere. Also, Atlanta United cannot stop taking, stealing uh, all the awards. They want it all for themselves. Also, a couple of our favorite human beings are, are leaving Atlanta United, which is very sad. Bobby Boswell and Kerwin Jones. Also, Clint Dempsey getting another contract. He is never leaving. He's the Marcus Beasley of Seattle and the MLS controversies of 2017. Ah, in the second segment, you reference is the big episode. I think this is why <laughs> we are talking to the acting, the interim men's national team head coach, Dave Sarakin. Yeah, that's right. We're actually talking. This isn't a sketch. This isn't a skit. This isn't a joke. We're actually talking to Dave Sarakin. Woo! I think that requires a Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Dave Sarakin is on. Also, in the third segment, we cover uh, the first legs of the uh, the conference final games for the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference. Uh, we had a snoozer, and then we had a red card, uh, and it, it was another a pair of uh, one game really fun and one game uh, just not not as fun. But we talk about everything today and more on the Cool Again. Hi, this is Dave Sarakin from U.S. Soccer, and you're listening to the Cooligans. Yeah, baby! Yeah! yeah. We are back. Another hot episode. Look at this! Uh, Look, we if you're listening, you don't know what we're pointing out. You don't even know we're pointing. <laughs> uh, but we, well, we realized we asked our fans for stuff for the studio. Yeah. Um, and then we went ahead and just got a, a really dope new studio. <laughs> And everyone's like, where's all the scars? Where's all the stuff? So we're going to start bringing in one or two items every every episode. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of bring in a little bit of our fans um, and, and what they wanted us to have here in this much fancier uh, studio <laughs> that they're constantly afraid we're breaking stuff. <laughs> um, and they should be. Exactly. So welcome to the show, everybody. We're ex- this is... This is unprecedented. Crazy. Yeah. That we th- that this show is even happening with the <laughs> guests that we have today. Everything. Everything that's happened <laughs> in the last month is unprecedented. It's all of None it. None of it should be happening. <laughs> we don't deserve any of this. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, no, don't say we don't deserve it. I that's mean, no, well, certainly we deserve it. In fact, we deserve more. But, you know, just to be <laughs> humble in front of the fans. <laughs> exactly. No, it's, it's just crazy, and we're just having a good time. But the, uh, today we have... The interim coach, manager, the acting coach, the acting coach of head coach, <laughs> the the king of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> of the U.S. men's national team right. at the moment. Dave Sarakin is on the show. Uh, you heard him correctly. <laughs> Dave Sarakin is on the Cooligans. Has come on the Cooligans, <laughs> and not only is is uh, is it crazy, but he's listened to our podcast before. Wow, and. Has he has he has thoughts on it? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> well, apparently, if you've never, this must have been like a small part of one episode <laughs> where we voiced our opinions on something we may not have all the facts on. Uh, apparently, sometimes the people who made those decisions that we criticized uh, have an ability to tell us we're wrong. And oh boy, oh boy. So yes, uh, a great show. So you're gonna, you guys are gonna tune in and uh, and you're gonna enjoy it because it's oh, uh, it, exciting for us and and definitely one of those. Uh, uh, look, every I feel like every couple of months we have these moments where we're like, oh man, this is wild. We we, yeah. we didn't think we'd get here. We're just two comedians, and now we're talking to the coach of the U.S. men's national team. That's nuts. Uh, by the way, I just want to say, okay, the the coach, the head coach of the men's national team, has been on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so for everyone out there who may work for, uh, you know, specific clubs here in the U.S., <laughs> when you don't think our podcast is good enough for one of your backup players, <laughs> just think to yourself that either clearly you're wrong or there's just not enough people monitoring the head coach of the men's <laughs> national team. So the point we're trying to make is... Respond to our emails, <laughs> please. <laughs> we're clearly important enough. We're trying. We're the current head coach. We need. We're trying to look. I'm wearing this shirt. It's a U.S. shirt. Click. I didn't pay attention to the memo <laughs> he sent, but I'm wearing this one, and people think it's great. <laughs> so please, you know, is that can that give us some credibility? Hopefully, we get to where we need to be. But this is a uh, uh, look, a, a pinnacle, another exciting this thing. This is another level in the in the in the Cooligans career, and. As proof 
of what's on our table and what's in our hearts, we are bringing all the fans with us. And every <laughs> level up we go, everyone levels up. <laughs> so, everyone. Siege leveled up. Kale Parker leveled up. Jay Riddle leveled up. Everybody leveled up. <laughs> exactly. It's a, everybody eats. All yeah, right? Everybody all, eats. All everybody <laughs> eats. <laughs> so if you're listening to this podcast and not watching the video uh, on our YouTube channel, make sure you do that as well. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube.com slash Soccer Cooligans. Throw us a like. Uh, but there is, uh, we have a picture frame that was sent uh, from Tropic Sounders. Yep. Uh, it's a tro Tropic Sound at Tropic Sounders on Twitter, and they. Uh, so we we brought we brought them with us, and it's a it's a great photo of of Siege and Kale. The, uh, the unholy meeting. The unholy meeting, uh, and, and they took a photo and they sent us this uh, this picture uh, of them giving us the middle finger, uh, and and yeah, you know what. And now, and now everyone can see you. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, you said we said we we're gonna put it in the studio. Well, well it, we did. It is. <laughs> so how you feel about that now? <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, and we're gonna every every week we'll bring uh, you know a, a, a different item just to you know to make us feel more at home as opposed to you know this this cold corporate this corporate <laughs> <laughs> beautiful beautiful. We and love you very we much. Love, very respectful. But it's also, you allow us in here. It is also heartless and soulless. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly here only for profit, which we still don't understand why you involve us. But nonetheless, uh, we're gonna bring a little bit of a little bit of mom's cooking in oh, here every yeah. once in a while. <laughs> so uh, my name is Christian Polanco. My name is Alexis Guerrero. Uh, and yeah, another another exciting uh, show for you. So uh, yeah, uh, and again, shout out to our producer Mike Coscarelli. Mike Coscarelli. Shouts to Mike. Audio cameras. Lighting, hair, hair, the whole nine. <laughs> it's mostly hair. I just came in from surgery. He's been <laughs> helping me out. Yeah. So you did. Uh, I don't know how much. I don't know how detailed we can get about this subject. Uh, but well, I mean, it's a podcast. We can say what we want. <laughs> but also, I know that Dave Sarakin is going to listen to this episode. So I'm really afraid of talking about this. But I will say, in my most private of areas. Yes. Um, I had surgery this morning. Um, okay. They said it was a quick surgery. So they you're said not to worry. And I got the stairs. The closest thing I have to a son uh, <laughs> was cut open, uh, and uh, I was scared. Uh, I'm still a little scared. Uh, I took no drug medication, so I'm not buzzing. Okay, I'm just. Because you are, you're a Christian scientist. Yeah, yeah, no, I just they they prescribed me oxycodone, and I'm like, guys. You didn't cut it off. Yo, hook it back. up. Yeah, you, Bro, did, I mean, you didn't cut it off in an alleyway. How great would it would this show be if we are both on Oxy right now? <laughs> we're just we're both like acoustic guitars. <laughs> so yeah, I mean look, there's an opioid crisis in the US. Call me Chris, mean, call me Christian Mraz. Yeah. <laughs> You're wearing uh, like one of those like wicker basket fedoras. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I obviously am so not. Yeah, but you're. Off. I mean, so uh, like, I, we're not going to go into too much detail about it because it is personal and it's also a soccer podcast yeah, yeah. and also the coach of your soccer was on. Yeah. So we need to respect this episode uh, a little more. But Alexis is is fine and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. He's uh, he's going to be out of commission uh, yeah, for, for a couple weeks. His two wife, weeks. His wife is going to be pretty disappointed. Uh, uh, I'm already disappointed. So yeah, two weeks. <laughs> but of, it was uh, it was a mildly it was a serious issue. Yeah, but, but it's, it's taken a, care yeah, of. Yeah, it's a, it's an easy surgery. Well, I mean, taken care of. It's going to be tested now. But whatever. It was this, re it was removed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whatever the issue was, it's gone now. <laughs> It, it, it felt as awkward as somebody getting fired during the day in the middle of like a cubicle farm. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how awkward it okay, was. Okay, so if you want to know more about it, just, uh, you know, s slide in Alexis's DMs and he will show you photos. Yeah, hashtag save the crew, hashtag save Alexis's crew member. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so let's... Let's start with let's start with Portland. How about we start the let's show? Let's go there because there. Uh, uh, we have two Seattle Sounders fans yeah, right here. Two Seattle, so they could care less. Uh, in fact, there's their message to Kayla Porter. Uh, but the truth is, is, like when we talk about you know teams in in MLS that sort of figured it out, do it right, kind of have their own system. Uh, it seemed like they're really well planned. Some of these teams sometimes seem like it's absolute bedlam. Some of the decision ma uh, making or some of the things that are happening. Portland has always avoided that in the sense that they've always felt like they got a system, they have a fan base, they know exactly what they're doing, they hire people that are smart. This is one of the first decisions in a while because when they started, it certainly wasn't this smooth. But this is one of the first things that have happened that have really taken me aback where I'm like, 
do they even know what's happening? Is everything okay there? Caleb Porter. Get Merritt on the phone. Get Merritt Paul say, Merritt, are you all right, yeah. man? Well, actually, he gave an interview where he seemed very angry uh, recently. <laughs> but um, And he just seems like an excitable guy. Uh, per, uh, Merritt Paulson seems like someone who doesn't shy away from his, his name true feelings. was Merritt Paulson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Fight Club? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His name was. Oh, you haven't seen. You've I've seen, seen Fight, Fight Club. Club. Yeah, it's been a while though. Great movie. Uh, guy shoots himself in the mouth. Great cool. reference. I'm sure I'm the first one who's ever made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, watching, watching as the sort of the data came out, the news came out, and seeing how everything unfolded, I was really surprised. It, it made me seem like was there a power struggle, but then everyone sent like really positive messages back and forth to each other. I. Uh, we immediately thought, first thing we thought was USMNT. He's going to become the manager of the men's national team. Yeah. And that's why he's and leaving. And his Dave Zarek is like, he's not taking my job. His Dave Zarek <laughs> is just screwing on a silencer. Uh, <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. Trust me. I think I'll be fine. Um, so, I, you know, I, I even tweeted out from our account, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce Arena is checking on the weather in Portland. <laughs> just as a joke to see, like, Bruce Arena jumps into any open opportunity. Yeah, I, I mean, we didn't – uh, Caleb Porter is uh, – he left the job. Yeah, I think you did mention that. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, Caleb he, Porter leaves. He left the, uh, the job uh, – uh, uh, you know, he was the head coach of the Portland Timbers, uh, if you didn't know, uh, which became as a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, the Portland Timbers finished first in the Western Conference. They won the MLS Cup in 2015. Uh he, he was there for five years. Uh, pretty successful years. I, I mean, think he only missed the playoffs twice, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a, it, and, and also uh, the Portland Timbers job is one of the most coveted jobs, I would argue, in soccer in general. I mean, one of the best fan bases. Uh, yeah, no, certainly. I mean, up until some of the other you know markets started stepping their game up, I would say that Seattle and Portland were the first two markets that and fan bases where – everyone was envious of them and we still are i mean people talk about what it's like to i have friends that are comedians that will travel to portland or are from portland and they could care less about soccer but when you bring up timbers it's a different emotion yeah. you know they, they're they're invested in it even if, even friends that go to portland were like yo everyone was talking about these uh, timbers i try to go and you can't get tickets and it's 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 exciting and still something i'm really upset that we haven't been able to go check out uh personally but hopefully that changes next year but um you know I can't. People were like, "Oh, well, he's achieved everything." No, he hasn't. What? Could just because you win an MLS Cup? You didn't win the Champions League, dog. Come on now, you didn't win <laughs> CCL, you know. Um, and now we have the Confederate League that's coming out of a Confederate champion, the Confederation, the, conf the, conf yeah. the Confederacy. Uh, yeah, it's the only just Southern teams. Uh, <laughs> Confederacy only, League. Uh, but no, there's that new Confederacy. What, when Nashville gets an MLS <laughs> and Atlanta, the, con the Confederacy Cup. Hot, <laughs> hot chicken versus lemon pepper wings. Um, you know, I can't imagine that this was. I know that they're saying it's amicable. I don't think so. I no, think there's no something way. Something happened. Yeah, there's no way you leave like it's like when a celebrity couple like breaks up when they're where you were like, oh, they're but they're both yeah. awesome, and no, then we're just better friends. No, you ain't. No, it's like oh, uh, then you find out she was putting glass in his food. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. like oh, wow, whoa, I didn't know. I didn't know she cared. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know she was capable of that. Why would you do that to your best friend? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it just seems it just seems odd. It just seems very strange. Uh, yeah, the timing I, of it is weird too. Before MLS Cup, everything about it seems odd, unless. What the story is, is that maybe, because clearly the USMNT thing is is either not, not clearly, but it looks like that's not it. Uh, it looks like that all the rumors and all the signs are pointing to him going back to Ohio to coach FC Cincinnati. FC Cincinnati said that's not the case. They're happy with their current coach, mm -hmm. um, Koch, if I'm not mistaken, Adam Koch, uh, or Coke, maybe he pronounces it Coke. Um, what's happening? No one knows. It, it, yeah, it's very odd. Yeah, so it, it, uh, uh, somebody leaving this job uh, with when there's like no real information at hand, a, a, especially after uh, a successful year. I mean, it, they didn't win the cup, but they 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 played very well. Uh, you, know, you know, Houston is Houston's gonna be Houston. Yeah, when you when you play uh, yeah. on that pitch. So so it, it, it sort of begs the question: like, if they would have won MLS Cup, would he still have left? You know, it's, it just seems like an odd. Uh, decision. Yeah. Everyone's trying to figure out, like, well, what was, what's, what's Caleb's next move? Yeah, you know? I mean, but also, like, what happened during the international break? You know, <laughs> what could have possibly happened? Yeah, I, so it, it really just suggests something internally was going on. Uh, Did they not get him a birthday cake? We saw what happened with Yaya, huh? You know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I, I think Caleb Porter is. He's he's just he's one of these guys that is uh, he, he's been proven enough 
uh, and has had enough success yeah. where he can kind of like pick his. If he wants to be in an, uh, another, he wants another MLS job. It's the doors open. Yeah, for sure. For I mean, that. what are some of the teams that have openings? Uh, besides uh, Portland, uh, maybe I don't know. Los Angeles doesn't bring back uh, Siggy Schmidt. Okay. Maybe that's something. That'd um, be a weird move. Would be. Um, Remy Gard already got into uh, Montreal, so that's not it. I can't imagine. I mean, maybe LA Galaxy. Yo, Pep, just, Pep Guardiola better watch yeah, out. I know. Come on, son. <laughs> Caleb's out to your job. He's out for Bayern Munich, <laughs> uh, which I could see him do pretty well in. He's like, yeah, uh, there's no reason to be a coach. Just all of you are amazing. Go out and play what you do best. That uh, would be – I mean, look, Bob Bradley had that opportunity at Swansea, and that didn't go well. But, like, it would be cool to see any American manager – be successful yeah. in, in Europe. Uh, you know, I, I West mean, Ham fans are like, he's better than, <laughs> you know, uh, what's his face? Why David not? Moyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, it is uh, just another, yeah, like another strange Yeah, decision, I mean, I wish we had more information yeah, for I wish you. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just like, everyone's We're just shocked. stunned. We're it, shocked. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so That's like if you find out, like, by the third segment, Christian left. Well, no, I think all of you would know why Christian left the cool again. Oh, so. left, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, let's get into some other stuff. Uh, oh, I also, w before I mention this, uh, uh, congratulations to uh, uh, 10, 10 winners who won our uh, Atlanta uh, slash Cooligans poster from our live show that we did at the Red Clay Comedy Festival. Uh, and uh, I, I, I did message a lot of the people that, that, yeah. that won, and, and people sent some very uh, nice messages. Very it, nice. Beautiful messages. Uh, uh, congratulations, Amanda. She won the signed poster from Julian Gressel, uh, Brittany Arnold, and Bobby Boswell. And uh, and it was cool. She sent an email saying thank you, but she also said like that she was a a, a, a new fan of soccer, and as a lot of Atlanta United fans are, since the team is new. Uh, but she did say that she likes listening to the show ah. uh, because as a new soccer fan, it's it's exciting to hear about soccer and it not be boring. Hey, That's we'll it. take it. That's and it. shots fired to all the other podcasts. <laughs> That is our our main goal out of from this show is to not be boring. That's yeah, it. We want to entertain. That, uh, so that's why sometimes you guys have to tweet at us and correct a lot of our facts. <laughs> it's because we're here to entertain. <laughs> we're not here yeah. to give you data. That's why Fox News is uh, quote unquote entertaining because they're always wrong. Yeah, they're always wrong. <laughs> and that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> what's better than that? Also, thanks for equating us with Fox News. It's like, oh, look, these people don't know what they're talking about <laughs> and I can't stop watching. <laughs> let's watch this train wreck. And now you guys are like, let's listen to this train wreck. We try. We try really hard. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Atlanta United... Uh, they are going through a couple changes. Yeah, they uh, just uh, let go of half their squad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean a couple, a couple people are gone. But uh, Kevin Jones retires. Yes, Bobby Boswell. This Bobby. is what this is what crushes us. Bobby Double Boswell, B. not his contract was not renewed. Uh, doesn't mean that he's he can't come back, but you know it doesn't it doesn't look good. It does I, not look good with Atlanta. So it, I, I guess they they you know he he, he he they brought him there for what a couple months. Uh, they got. I guess they got like an expiring contract. I think maybe that was like part of it. I don't think that counts for the cap. The expiring contract. I don't know. Uh, it just, I just think he was available. You know, easy and trade and someone to you know for uh, depth. I guess yeah, for depth. And he did play, which was awesome. And he almost scored. Remember he that? Almost, he I, almost I, which, scored. Which which would have put. Atlanta and the Cooligans. <laughs> it would have put Atlanta uh, in second place. Yeah, and they would have gotten the bye and not had oh, to well, play. Oh well, thank God, because then NYCFC. All right, good. Thank <laughs> you for not scoring, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, but yeah, f uh, friend of the of the podcast. Yeah, Bobby although Boswell. still doesn't follow us on Twitter. Okay, I th does he? I think he follows us on Instagram. I, mean, I might be wrong, but I don't know. I'm gonna double check. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Really uh, yeah. calling Pet out Bobby Boswell. Uh, petty as shit. <laughs> Look, at it's, it's his call-out culture. I mean, he's like retweeted us a bunch. <laughs> he's faved. We've had conversations. Buddy, hit the follow button. <laughs> How hard is it? So, uh, so yeah, we're kind of uh, bummed out about that because uh, Bobby, when he did our, our live show, was great. I, he was and great and super funny. Super funny. And, and we got to give props to Bobby uh, for his... Uh, his his tweet that he put out, uh, I'll actually I'll put I'll bring it up on the screen over here. Uh, Bobby, uh, when he uh, when he got uh, when he found out, I guess that he wasn't uh, coming back uh, with with Atlanta. He follows us on Instagram. All's all's well <laughs> that ends well. Wow, just what a where's Bobby's uh, thing here? 
this we should have done before. Uh, here we are just playing with the live wall. He did say uh, he did say that um, uh, this is I'm looking at the wrong Twitter account. That's the problem. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he he was, uh, you know, he uh, one time he said, I think for a couple weeks ago, he tweeted out. I just want to announce that I will not be running for USSF president. <laughs> I mean, that's the type of levity that you don't get a lot in U.S. soccer. So we're happy that there's someone on the inside. Yeah. And he but the, the tweet he put out was uh, just saying that oh, he was like, maybe I shouldn't have told Tata that I wanted to be Blanco Messi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Want to be called Blanco Messi <laughs> in the uh, end of uh, the exit meeting. Yeah. The exit interview. Uh, which is just great. So funny. Uh, he's he's great personality. Great personality. Him. And look, even if he if he uh, uh, doesn't find another job with another team, come grab a mic with the Cooligans. Oh man, it'd be so funny. Yeah, come on, <laughs> come be the third host. <laughs> That's what I need is someone taller and thinner. <laughs> Just good. Really, I mean, he'll really make us look bad. Oh boy, we, we, <laughs> that might be a very very bad idea. Yeah, you so, can't be better than us at soccer, look better than us, and be funnier. That's not allowed. That's no. not allowed on this show. I mean, that also that person doesn't exist. No. Right? <laughs> I mean, look far and wide, buddy. Um, but Atlanta did get uh, some awards, right? So uh, a lot of controversy uh, regarding the, the end of season awards, right? So Atlanta did win. You mean the Atlanta awards? The Atlanta awards. <laughs> yeah. they, just, they did kind just of uh, run held, the table. Held in Decatur. They, yeah. just, <laughs> they had uh, the, the, the whole ceremony. But no, the Atlanta uh, did win goal of the year, the Tito Yabo goal, save yeah. of the year. Brad Guzan, yeah. uh, and also Newcomer of the Year, uh, Miguel Amiro. I mean, a lot of those are well-deserved. I mean, that save uh, from Brad Guzan was absolutely incredible. Uh, Miguel Amiro, it was funny, like, you look at the, some of the fan voting uh, on Twitter. They did a couple Twitter polls and whatnot, and people were voting for, it was like, Two of three of the three of the four options for a lot of these polls that people were putting up were Atlanta United players. They had Almiron, yeah. LGP, uh, you know, uh, what's uh, the um, Joseph Martinez. It's just funny to see. Um, you know, we talk about Atlanta a lot. We try not to only talk about Atlanta, just like when we started. We try not to only talk about NYCFC, but. That's how much that sort of everything that this team has done is sort of taken over, uh, you know, the general the general like sort of energy and, and conversation in yeah, American yeah. soccer. You know, a lot of what they've done they is very impressive. They've MLS. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they certainly become really important. And I know people that aren't, you know, uh, MLS fans that maybe are just, you know, more Euro snobbish and they know about um, Atlanta United and they know Miguel Amiron and they know Tata Martino. Um, you know, when I first started telling people Tata Martino was the coach in Atlanta, people kind of snickered and were like, oh, I guess, you know, that's I failed, huh? Like he's there. And now people are like, whoa, that's kind of cool. Like that tone has changed a little bit. And that's actually pretty dope. So, again, you know, maybe they don't deserve every single award, but it's nice that they've won a few. <laughs> so that's I mean, the, the, the controversy for a lot of people, I think, and, and, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up as well. But the Tio Viabago, which was great against Orlando, uh, th 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 I mean, it was a rocket and credit. S still I, traveling through the net. Yeah. W watching it live, I was like, I'm, I feel, I'm, I'm physically injured after watching that goal. Yeah, it, yeah. Was that, it was that incredible. Uh, but over the Villa goal against the Philadelphia Union, the 50-yard the chip, it's, it's a little tough. Right. I mean, Tiff. I mean, it's just, it was such a wild goal and so miraculous. And I, and uh, yes, when, when I come, I saw both of those goals live. And when I was watching both of them, I was definitely way more excited about Villa's goal. Yeah. Just because it was it just unfathomable, right? Yeah. It, that uh, goals like that don't happen very often. Uh, and, and also, I mean, just the balls it takes to try to chip the keeper from yeah. 50 yards out. And, and and not just any keeper. I mean, it's Andre Blake. Andre he's, Blake. He's not Great a pushover. Keeper. I think he got um, he got some best keeper of the year, like based on like new numbers. I yeah. mean, not not based on Philadelphia Union's Season. win loss. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the, I, I mean, it, it, it's weird because when you when you play on a bad team, you and you're a keeper, you more shots are taken at you, so you have a higher chance of like looking better for on the on the stat sheet. Yeah. So, uh, and that's what Andre Blake was. But, but, I look. I'm gonna say Villa's goal is better than Villalba's. That's, that's it. it. Done. That's it. Done. I'm look, there. And honestly, also less letters in the last name. Yeah, Villa v is already in Villa. <laughs> he took that LBA out. And he was like, I don't need it. And also, you shoot from over there as hard as you can. I'm a finesse it from back here. 
<laughs> Look, all right, they have two different approaches, you know. Some, two very different some, approaches. You know, some like uh, some people like the aggressive type, you know. Yeah, yeah. And some people like people like a little yeah. soft to smooth. Villa but kicks the door and pulls your <laughs> hair. Villa, he's writing you a poem. <laughs> So you know that I'm a fan of that approach. Yeah, though, yeah. That's all I'm saying. I just I, I just need a man to be good to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna tell you which one I like, <laughs> but I think sometimes you can have both. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, mix it up sometimes. Although again, for the next two weeks, not having anything. Could they have shared the award? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could we had them had them both at the same time? Yeah. I mean, we, a boy can dream. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, you know, not to say that they should both, uh, you know, both penetrate the award ceremony. <laughs> what I'm just saying is that they. <laughs> Maybe certainly not at the same time, but I think you could bring them both up to stage <laughs> at different times. Sure. Uh, look, there's a lot of uh, maybe for the All Star Game, we can have different, <laughs> yeah. different strategy. You know. Is the All Star Game in Vegas? <laughs> uh, and once again, I would like to reiterate that the head of the, the head coach of the men's national team is going to be listening to this. We're talking about soccer. Yeah, yeah. All right. So whatever comes up in your X, mind, fans. X's and O's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Lots of X's and O's. <laughs> At the end of the letter, you left. <laughs> so, uh, th yeah, that, that did cause a lot of controversy. But Viabas goal did win. And uh, look, if Villas goal never happened, I'm fine with Viabas yeah. goal being. That, that was incredible. I think Viabas goal is award worthy. I just yeah. don't think it's this award. Exactly. So hardest shot ever. Probably. <laughs> um, or angriest face. You know what was interesting? When, when I w w uh, watched the goal again, uh, it was Adrian uh, Healy and Taylor Twelman on the call. And the, the goal was after a, a throw-in. I forgot who threw the ball in. But uh, it was just he took a couple touches. No one really expected the shot. But it was one of those uh, goals, I think it was like mid-season, where I think a lot of times these new players uh, come into the league and nobody really knows what to expect of them. Yeah, nobody knows you. I don't think anybody knew exactly that. No, one, I didn't think they, anyone thought, even the defender, you see, like, kind of them, they, they sort of back off. Yeah. Because, like, he's, he's not going to take the shot. And even if he does, we got Joe Bendick back there. Yeah, they're like, who is this, this guy? No, it's Argentina. What is this Come on, he's not taking the shot. <laughs> he's not taking, not doing anything he's to me. He's probably scared. <laughs> I'll just take a step back, you know, just make sure that I got, where did that ball just go? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, on the call itself, you hear Taylor Twelman go like, oh, like he's just shocked. Like, we have this in MLS? Yeah. This is. Or like, who knew that guy had that in the locker? Yeah. Yeah. He just just shocked that like th th that quality of a shot was taken during a major league soccer game. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also like the, you know, you mentioned it, like no one knows who these players are. But sometimes you just have something that's your calling card. You know, something where you, you do something and they're like, okay, that's who that is. Yeah. That's that moment for him. Because that's exactly the type of player Villalba was for the rest of the season. You know, high energy, fast paced, really angry. I think he needs to relax. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, we did mention like uh, he has he he wins the the most frightening face after a goal award as well. The, it's he, also the contradiction between him and Joseph Martinez. Joseph Martinez stares you down. Yeah, and he's behind. He just every time he goes, he literally sends every bit of energy <laughs> out of his body. Um, and also go uh, save of the year from Brad Guzan. Uh, I, and a lot of people are suggesting because of the the. The, the rabid fan base, the rabid new fan base for Atlanta United. That they're playing up to it. That they're, they're, they're the polls, they're, they're stuffing those fucking <laughs> <laughs> ballots. A lot of dead <laughs> players are voting. <laughs> All right, we got to check these numbers. Yeah. We uh, heard there were 3 million illegal votes placed in Atlanta. <laughs> All right. We gotta, There's no data to prove that, but I'm telling right, you but, based on my but own the, thoughts. The Cooligans are <laughs> gathering a committee. Yeah. Uh, an exploratory committee. <laughs> it's the truth, folks. <laughs> the truth is out there, folks. But I, I'm fine with this goal. This, uh, I, I mean, with this save uh, on Bradley Wright Phillips takes that that uh, that it was off that. It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It was that that quick um, free kick where nobody was paying attention. But to also, it. they should grade it on a curve. It was a great save, but it was also against Bradley Wright Phillips in the playoffs. You know, he don't score in the playoffs. That so. wasn't that wasn't a playoff game. It was on the way to the playoffs. On the way to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was on. one of the end last of the two season. Games. End of the season. You know, he don't score then. All right. <laughs> So, uh, waiting for the New York Red Bulls. Fans. But, but, but uh, Brad Guzan did. Uh, it was we talked about it on the show, and uh, and it was a great save. I mean, it was like that where it was a uh, a great cross, and then uh, Guzan kind of put his forearm down in a way where the it ball crazy. bounced over the net, which is literally uh, nuts. Bradley Ware Phillip could have hit that ball anywhere, anywhere else, else, and it would have went in. It yeah. was absolutely insane. So uh, yeah, no, I'm trying to think of the, was there any other save that I was like. Uh, blown away by. I think the one Stefan Fry had a, a, a yeah, great Stephen save. Fry from had the, one. It was a free kick. I think it was against Vancouver. I don't yeah. remember. Uh, but 
that that's the only one that co- sort of comes to mind. I don't know if there's any other great saves that 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 uh, can compete with the Guzan one, but the, I think the Stephen Fry one uh, was impressive. I think he, he also stopped the free kick. The I, MLS Cup final isn't a part of this, so last year's uh, save on Josie Altidore's header, yeah, should have counted for this year. That and would I be goal of the uh, save of the year yeah. every year. Save of the century. Uh, century? Century? Century. <laughs> century, that's fine. Century. Uh, celery. Uh, Definitely never come And uh, newcomer of the year, Miguel Amidong. Yeah. And, and I don't think anyone has that big an issue with that. I think the, the, the biggest competition were the other players on Atlanta United. Uh, yeah. Yamil, Yamil Assad, Joseph Martinez, and Tito yeah. You could have so, sort of uh, ha- made a case for All of any them. one of them. I almost... Would say Joseph Martinez kind of did. I mean, that deserves it more. But I could understand if Martinez did win, but he was injured. Yeah. But the numbers that he put up after uh, missing so many games, it, to me, is like, oh, you know what? Maybe, maybe could have uh, he could have won that. Award. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, a couple other things. Clint Dempsey. Oh, speaking he, of Seattle yeah, Sounders, negotiated his contract down. Actually, that's right. Yeah. So give them a little bit more cap space. Uh, you know, people in but Europe. He, but mainly he signed a new uh, new contract for one more year. One more year, which, you know, I didn't think – I did mention that I didn't think he would be in Seattle, but I didn't think he was not going to be in the MLS. I didn't think he was going to go um, away from the MLS. So um, what are you doing? I'm uh, driving uh, people nuts here. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I thought he would – I thought another team, I thought someone who, like a Houston maybe, um, would, would pay him um, a lot more because they certainly need the, uh, the scoring. Uh, so – Again, I'm impressed that uh, Seattle was willing to do that. I'm also impressed that he was willing to do that, take a pay cut to try to help the team get some uh, other players. Clearly, their, their team is getting older, so good for them. Uh, one person who's not happy about it, Nicholas Ladero. He's like, come on. <laughs> Wait, one more year. Oh, you think you feel like he doesn't want Dempsey there. Yeah, no, I think everyone knows they don't play the same together. But Dempsey had a great season. Sure. Uh, he, and Nicholas Ladero did not. Also, Clint Dempsey won uh, Comeback Player of the Year. Uh, yes, he did. You know, coming back he, from the heart. Yeah, the, the, the heart condition that he uh, what is it? Heart skipping a beat or something like that. Yeah. Uh, arrhythmia. You, I think it was an arrhythmia. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. It, I'm sure. It's can you feel the rhythmia <laughs> in my heart? <laughs> I wanted to make some music right that. I realized uh, you did, and that one popped <laughs> in my head, so I just did it anyway. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Dempsey did have uh, uh, you know quite a good year. Yeah. Uh, and look again, we nobody knew what to really expect, uh, but I think he, he lived up to the. Portland can't say shit, you yeah, know. Yeah. I think he's, he's uh, sort of proven a lot of people wrong, uh, and me and people, included. Yeah, you were you were railing against oh, him. Oh, I've eaten all that crow. <laughs> railing against him, uh, his heart this and heart that, <sighs> and uh, he's he, he's like, yo, I'll give you a dozen goals for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you hold these double digit goals? I'm like, all right, hold on, put it next to the L. So, uh, the last thing we want to talk about in this segment. Um, uh, actually, you know what? We don't have too much time. We, uh, we 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 talk about it a little bit with Dave, but we should talk about uh, Bruce Arena because we didn't talk about it last week. Yeah. But there was a bit of a controversy. Not a bit. Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna. We on our live wall. If you're listening, we pulled <laughs> up the five conspiracies. So we're just gonna leave this up and not talk about it. Sure, we can talk. We'll talk about it right after. So I, I just don't want to forget to. You want to <laughs> do this first or last? Let's let's talk about the thing that's up now, so it's not a distraction. Okay, cool. So. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, MLS released five, uh, controversies, I, conspiracies, five controversies of 2017. And I think it should be called the five controversies we're allowed to talk about, <laughs> uh, because some of these are, are, are really big. And look, as someone who writes an article for MLS, I don't want anyone to get upset with me, <laughs> but sometimes there's some things that I want to talk about that I can't, yeah. you know? And I think that's, obvi- that's obvious. That's obvious. That's obvious. You know, look, we're in, we're in a corporate setting. There's a lot of things that we can't say outside of the studio, which we would be in trouble for, for saying, let's say, at the water fountain that we can say <laughs> on the podcast. And same thing happens. So um, they listed their five controversies. If you don't have it, you've got what they're calling the brouhaha at BMO, which was the tunnel fight. Tunnel fight, much better term for I that. I feel like, yeah, tunnel fight, should, that's an easy. Brouhaha. I mean, fun. come on. Brouhaha? Yeah. What, uh, this, isn't, this isn't a back alley fight during Prohibition. <laughs> this is an actual... <laughs> fight that happened a little a scuffle yeah guys, this isn't a couple <laughs> kids at, at recess uh, yeah there's you know they were actually fighting each other for a pecky while. versus the printer yeah that was pecky versus the the refs the printer got involved and in the printer tried to break it up <laughs> the printer took some knocks the printer was like guys come yeah. down everybody go back to your corners <laughs> yeah so yeah if you don't remember that yeah with the, after the press conference where he was like uh what, what was the name that he mentioned trey trey 
Pr- get yeah, the, the frickin' printer. Get the frickin' printer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then you got the Barrios Gate, which is the illegal substitution. Yeah. Uh, which was awesome and, uh, you know, uh, was trolled hilariously um, by the uh, RSL media guy for their uh, li- uh, starting lineup on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, Ali Curtis leaves New York. Yeah, people still not really sure. Maybe Ali Curtis and uh, Kale Par- uh, Kale Por- uh, Caleb Porter are going to start their own. <laughs> <laughs> gonna start their own team, maybe. Uh, and then Jermaine Jones, a Mexico fan. I completely forgot he even put on the Mexico. Yeah, jersey. I forgot about this. So yeah, Jermaine Jones uh, was wearing uh, a, a, chich- a chicharito. Oh no, he was holding. He's holding a chicharito shirt, and but he's wearing the Mexico kit. Yeah. Like I guess supporting them for a game, but it's also. Uh, yeah, you're a men's national you're team You're U.S. men. That's like your bitter rival. Yeah, that's not what you do. You just don't do that. You're not gonna. You know, you don't see us. Uh, you know, holding uh, uh, two blazers. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't. You don't do that. <laughs> that's right. I mean, there's a, there's yeah. there's pro- a proper way to to do this. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> and that right there is not one of them. You don't. Yeah. He's also wearing a uh, Mexico jersey and holding one. You could have just held one. <laughs> If you, I feel like if you hold the shirt yeah. and not wear it, yeah. maybe it's a little bit like I'm trying to show, look, like just like just being cordial, like yeah, oh, this showing is, support, we're all players, whatever. Of you know, course. it's like if your girl asks you to hold her purse and not to be toxic masculinity all over this <laughs> podcast, but you don't put it on. <laughs> You just hold oh, it. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, you don't put it on? <laughs> you don't put you, it wait, on. Wait, so you actually, do you don't pull out her lipstick and put it on? No, no, you don't. Okay. Which I was meaning to talk to you about. <laughs> I mean, what are then? What are all those mirrors at Bloomingdale's for? <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> what <laughs> department of Bloomingdale's are you in? Uh, so, yeah, like, you know, you don't put on the purse. I thought my thong is kind of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bothering you, me. <laughs> you, I'm sure it is. My everything down there is bothering me today. So, yeah, you don't put it on. You hold it. And you know what? You hold it with a little bit of disdain. Like, you got to hold this jersey <laughs> Just a little bit away from you, just a little bit away, mm-hmm. maybe off to the side, like a matador. You know what I mean? Just a little something just to signify to the fans, like, look, I have to do this. I don't want to do it. You don't throw one out and be like, no, give me one. I'll put one on. Can you put my name on the back of it? Some of, some of the controversies that we would have, we think should have been brought up that we're not. Uh, I mean, it's easy. We could add a top six, top right. seven. Uh, I mean, one and if of them, you're keeping score, this is the moment where we no longer get work at MLS. But go ahead. <laughs> no, but uh, the fruit bowl, the fruit bowl, baby, the, the Dax McCarty fruit bowl that we sent uh, the McCarty's for their wedding. And we're eventually thanked. It took a it while. It took a little bit of effort, uh, meaning it t- uh, took a flight and we had a really yeah. it took a lot of effort. Yeah. We had to get a hotel room just to get a thank you. Yeah. But, uh, but we did get it. We did. And so, so we're not bitter about that. We're not happy. We're happy that was all sorted out. But, you know, that, that's easily one of the biggest c- controversies in Major League Soccer. In all of U.S. soccer. I don't understand how that's something. Yeah, that guy played for the men's national team. Okay. Really uh, just, uh, just, just kind of just let everybody down with I it. I think then. another one is maybe uh, Kyle Aaron getting some early practice on, uh, you know, driving in England. <laughs> Uh, I'll just yeah, say that. that one was left off. That uh, was important for obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, but, but yes, that was also a pretty big one. Although, uh, to be honest, if you pulled this article up and that was the first one, you'd be like, "Damn, <laughs> Damn yo, I'm let's go hard, <laughs> yo, I'm less, <laughs> calma, thing, I'm less, yo, meal." Just, just like a a twelve page article, just a whole piece about it. I'm like, wow, they really <laughs> a lot, a lot's changed. Throwing them under the bus. <laughs> So um, the the final thing we want to talk about is uh, before we talk to Dave Harrikin is uh, about Bruce Arena and and we didn't talk about it because we were wa- we were watching the game uh, the 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 Portugal U S friendly uh, but we were watching the game at a bar so we didn't get to hear what we didn't get audio we didn't get audio yeah. of what Bruce Arena was saying uh, he was hired as an analyst for Fox Soccer. And uh, was for, that a for, mistake for that? And a, a lot of people felt that it was, yes. uh, especially com- compared to the, you know, after Italy missed out on the World Cup, uh, the what's in Ventura, right? Is that yeah. the, the the manager's name where he had to he needed a police escort. Mm-hmm. Uh, he couldn't leave safely without uh, without protection. And some people were saying, well, look, look how Italy does it. And it's like, we're not saying Bruce Arena should be in danger. Yeah. Uh, you know, his life should be in danger. Right. We're not saying now bring machetes <laughs> to the game. But, we're, you know, there is something to say, like, look, if we're at zero and they're 100, maybe we don't need to go to 100. <laughs> I don't even think we need to go to 90. I think 70 to 80 is a yeah. comfortable space. 
Uh, so I disagree with a lot of people who are like, oh, don't worry about it. If, if I were someone in Bruce Arena's team, uh, my job would probably be to hold the cure meets, but I would also be willing to step up and go, hey, uh, this seems like not a good idea, you know? At the very, that's like, a, uh, you know, uh, that that's a oh, easy way to a good way to put it. It's or just if it's, Kendrick Lamar would have told him, "Be humble, be humble." You know, and he was, and he was like, "Nothing needs to change. Everything's perfectly <laughs> and fine." Is like, "Can you stop calling me a bitch?" Yeah, yeah. Kendrick, I mean, it seems excessive. Yeah, yeah. he's like, "I don't know who you are. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Why are you here?" Uh, yeah, it just it seems like uh, yeah, well, like a lot of people mentioned tone deaf, a little um, just. You understand? It was uh, certainly tone deaf. It really was. Uh, uh, I mean, just uh, to sit there and double down on yeah. what nobody wants to hear. Like nobody wants to see you, dog. Yeah. I, and and look, it's fine. I'm not saying he he shouldn't have been on television. I, it, it's not about that. I think there is a uh, the, the the approach of like I don't know, showing a little remorse, feeling yeah. of being being like regretful of decisions you made. Like there's a difference between like going on TV and being like. Yo, what's good, everybody? Yeah. Like, Guess yo, who it is? What the kids here? <laughs> what camera am I talking to? <laughs> I'm the hottest thing in the country yeah. right now. Like, who people want to hear what I gotta <laughs> it, say? That it's like just a little bit like a, a, of a softer tone. Yeah. Because uh, it's not like I don't necess- I don't like hate the guy. It's no. just like he got hired to do a job and and it did and it didn't work out. Yeah, but also like. You know, his his legacy is, like, jaded now. Not maybe not jaded. Its legacy is, like, tarnished. Is tarnished. That's the word I was yeah. looking for. And fe- yeah. tar- tarred and feathered. <laughs> tarnished and feathered. <laughs> uh, like, you know, all of a sudden, now his, his entire life's work has been sort of shifted to this one thing that happened. Yeah. It's huge, and it should be focused on, but you figured you'd come in a bit with just a different energy, just a bit of a different tone. Like, you know, it's like... Louis C.K. going on late night and going, I got bits. No, no, no. Nobody wants <laughs> no. to hear it. <laughs> no, I got you. You need to atone, I, my been, dude. I've been working on a bunch yeah. of stuff. I, I got, got this to... funny stuff about popcorn. <laughs> Put the popcorn bit down, my now dude. Now is not the no. time. You need to atone. <laughs> okay. Let us heal yeah. first. <laughs> this ain't, that ain't the game. You don't just show up and go, people forgot about all that, right? <laughs> Look at what I got to say. Yes. And what Bruce Arena did and Louis C.K are equally bad no uh, but you know what i mean <laughs> we want everyone to know uh, we don't think they're equally bad but you know if something happens you need to sort of have the right tone like if i upset my wife i don't just come back in and start trying to crush jokes or and be like ah we should how about we never take the garbage out huh? i thought we were all calling your mother a whore yeah <laughs> That you don't double down on what you did wrong. Exactly. So look, he could have handled it a little differently. I, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, Alexi Lalas did mention like, oh, uh, you know, it was good TV to have him on there. And it is. We're, he, talking we're talking about, about it. it. Like no one, no one is denying that part. But it's really on Bruce. If you're gonna be on the show, then it's like the, the approach has to be different. That's 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 yeah. my only mentality. Because it's like. You've done a lot for U.S. soccer. You have a ton of respect. Uh, you've earned a lot of respect from a lot of people. And yes, missing out in the World Cup is incredibly disappointing. And it is, it does, uh, you know, it is a blemish on your career. Uh, but it doesn't have to define who you are. And but if you just, but it certainly should define the next few weeks. Sure, uh, but it, but if you if you can't show any a, a little bit of like regret or just feel bad about it yeah. that seems that just seems odd it just seems like uh like being so emotionally detached from yeah, it. he's apathetic to what happened at least that's the way it, it comes across that's what it, that's so I'm, I'm just talking about that that appearance on fox soccer they, it sort of came off that way so yeah that's, that's what it just left a, like a poor taste in, in i think in everybody's mouth so uh that's our opinion on it and uh you know and we'll bring it up with uh with dave with dave uh, our friend dave our, our boy uh Sar- sarikin yeah uh so rich homie dave <laughs> uh so let's get to that let's get to our conversation uh with dave sarikin uh we are absolutely honored that he would come on the show yes uh and now uh, and we're we were excited that he made fun of us as well. Yes, uh, and by the way, uh, we are recording uh, these first two segments before the playoff games tonight. 
um, or yesterday. So we will record our third uh, segment after that. So you guys will hear the third segment will be after the two rounds of playoff games or the two uh, matches. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, tune in for the third segment, and you'll hear about uh, both uh, the playoff game between uh, Portland. I mean, Portland. Uh, oh, so sorry. <laughs> sorry. That sorry. one hurts more <laughs> than the <laughs> Caleb Porter Houston, mentioned. Houston and Seattle and uh, – Toronto and Columbus. And Toronto and Columbus. So, uh, let's get right to it. Thank you, guys. Uh, tune in next to our conversation with Dave Sarkin. Hey, thank you so much for listening to The Cooligans. We just want to break in real quick and ask you to, uh, I don't know what, buy something from our sponsors. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Come on, help us out. But SeatGeek is uh, one of our sponsors. Obviously, SeatGeek, uh, tic- official ticketing partner of MLS, fans of soccer, uh, and fans of The Cooligans. Like, if you are, if you live in Houston and you're saying, I did not think we were going to get this far, we got to buy tickets, I would suggest you go to the official ticket partner of MLS. Go to SeatGeek. You can go to the website. You can go to SeatGeek.com. Or guess what? Just get the app on your phone. Yeah, do it. It knows where you are. It's following your every move, but it also it tells you what tickets are around you, what cool events are happening. It's not just for MLS, but might as well buy your tickets for MLS on this. And how about this? If you put in the word Cooligans, you're going to get $20 off. That's right. Your first purchase. How about that? So if you're buying tickets, we're practically, we're, we're actually showing up we're putting 20 bucks right in your pocket and we're tapping you twice on the chest pocket we're like we're out of here that's, yeah, but it's, it's a very cute thing that we do. Uh, it's a thing we do with all our sponsors. We really just we go, do it all go, our sponsors. Go, just go to people's homes. Right, and, like and when, when we have the underwear thing, we would put the underwear on you. But now we're actually just giving you $20. <laughs> we're putting it right in your pocket, and we're saying, there you go. Yeah, that's right. So, go, so again, go to SeatGeek.com or use the SeatGeek app and uh, use the promo code COOLIGANS, and you will get 20 bucks off your first purchase yeah. on SeatGeek. Make the app your go-to app for finding the best deals on every type of ticket from sports to concerts to comedy like us or theater which will will be soon if you keep buying from our sponsors so don't forget seatgeek.com or the app 20 bucks for your first purchase welcome back baby welcome guys uh and this is this is <laughs> unprecedented it's unpre- it's exciting it's uh i'm a li- i gotta be honest i'm a little nervous a little uh, nervous i'm very <laughs> nervous i also feel like this is a prank uh this doesn't happen but look we started a, a podcast too uh, stupid, silly comedians, <laughs> and we said uh, one day we will be so important that we will be speaking <laughs> to the person who manages and coaches the men's national team. Yeah, and here we are. <laughs> wow! And not, and not only are we here, but we are, uh, yeah, uh, speaking to him. But we're in uh, Cumulus Studios, and this is yeah, this is all too much. This is for the us. first time we've done this, and and I'm glad we're doing this in. Uh, with it, with the most equipment that we can possibly we can we can ruin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else could we break uh, that a major conglomerate owns? That's what we asked ourselves. Uh, but we are excited to yeah. uh, welcome this man to the show. I mean, guys, you know, he was he was sitting there uh, behind the lines at Portugal, uh, our last uh, men's national team game. Uh, you know him, you've seen him. It's about time you hear from him. We're surprised he's even let us call him. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only, Coach Dave Sarek and everybody. Hey, Coach, how's it hey going? Hey, guys. He's here. How you doing? It's good to be on your show. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe you're saying that. Uh, <laughs> I guess first first things first, how did it feel? Um, because, you know, obviously probably not the best uh, set of circumstances, but when you received the call that you would be um, – I know there was different titles, interim, acting, um, right. current. How did it feel to be told that you would be the head coach uh, for the match against Portugal? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it was it, – see – it obviously was a little bittersweet. Um, you know, we, I'm sure we'll delve into, you know, the reasons that all came about. But uh, to, to to always have the opportunity to be a part of the national team in any capacity is a, is a real privilege. And um, you know, to to be able to sort of lead this group in the last game of 2017 um, in Portugal as we did was. Um, as I've said, you know, publicly, for me personally, I was very proud. I was, it was almost therapeutic for me to, to be able to be around these young guys and, and to be able to put out a team that, you know, showed the spirit that it did. But for me, as far as leading that group uh, as the national team coach, uh, I've, I've never taken that lightly. And um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was actually pretty special in, in its own right. Now, a lot of people kind of gave you a little bit of stick on the Internet for keeping a lot of the – um, assistants that had been there uh, previous uh, to Bruce Arena being uh, or leaving. Uh, 
Part of my idea was, I don't think you had a lot of time to sit there and start to hire assistants left and right. <laughs> uh, was that part of that decision making or was just this was your team and you were going to ride with them in Portugal? Yeah, it was all of that. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we, we didn't have a lot of time. And uh, quite frankly, you know, the group of guys that um, were a part of the staff uh, through this past year are all good young coaches, and, and we all work well together. Um, and it, 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 was, it was familiarity on every level. You know, some of the players, not all the players, but some of the players that were a part of it obviously knew all of us. And um, the way we work uh, in terms of preparation, building the roster, training, um, whatever you want to call it, 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 it worked with our group, and it made total sense to finish out the year with the group that had been together for the 10 months uh, prior. So, um, you know, I'd never thought twice about bringing in new guys for this game. This was always going to be the group that we, we, you know, sort of work with, and I thought it, it ended, the, ended the year pretty well. And what did you think of, uh, I mean, we, we were excited to see Weston McKinney uh, play and play so well. But what, were, what, what, were, what was, after the game against Portugal, what was the thing that you were most surprised at? It, was there anybody who uh, particularly impressed you? Were you impressed with any of the, the chemistry? Was there anything surprising uh, about that whole game? Well, you know, it, it, it's, for those of us on the inside, when you're, when you have such a short amount of time to put something together, you're never really sure what, when the curtain goes up, what it's really going to look like. You kind of have an idea, but on the day, you, you, there's no guarantees. And <clears throat> we brought this group in. <clears throat> we had about six days of training. It was sort of a crash course in, in getting to know one another, not only as staff and players, but the players themselves. There were a lot of guys in this group that obviously hadn't been together. So... You know, the theme going in on day one when I met with the group was the short-term objective was let's get to know one another, uh, let's get a feel for what we're good at, let's put guys in positions that we think uh, make sense this week, uh, and, and uh, you know, let's see what the competing looks like and, and the energy and the spirit and all the rest. So it was kind of a crash course. Um, and I think at the end of the day, there, there, there were a few surprises, but um, on the day, I, I really was pleased with almost, almost all performances. Of course, Ethan had a tough day. We know that. And I, uh, by the way, full disclosure, I did listen to your podcast before I came <laughs> on. So I, saw, I, I, I heard the Horvath <laughs> episode. And, and just, just so you know, on the inside, um, you know, we all felt terrible for the kid and he, and he did too and, and in a goalkeeper's career he's 22 a goalkeeper every goalkeeper Timmy Howard on down is going to have a moment like that unfortunately it happened on uh, on the on the big stage but to his credit he rallied and the players actually rallied around him uh, but but in terms of the entire group the young kids the you know the the blending of some of the the veteran guys I couldn't have been more pleased with the effort, the, as I mentioned, the, the spirit, the energy that we kind of put together in such a short amount of time to show America, honestly, without sounding corny, you know, I think a lot of people are watching this game. Some people didn't turn it on. They're too pissed off. I get that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, those that did watch, and I said this to the group afterwards, 2017 was a tough year. Um, you know, the idea of bringing this group together was to begin looking at what's coming up. And, and I think there's a lot of hope, and that's what I told the group. And, you know, for me, it was, I was very proud of that, that effort, uh, and, and it does give us all hope. Now, yeah. you were talking a little bit about the squad. I know. I just, before you yeah. ask your question, yeah. I just want to say. Do you want to apologize just, for the last episode? <laughs> no, I don't want to apologize. <laughs> I just, I love the fact that Dave Zarekin just yelled Horvath. <laughs> Yeah, that's certainly going to become our drop for the podcast. But what I, what, the main thing is that uh, even when we think about like this, two comedians just talking about soccer, and and this is the first time that we've sort of been confronted with like where we made fun of uh, uh, or made light of a situation, made light of a situation, and and then the person that was inside was like, hey, you know what? That actually made me feel a certain yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I do think that sort of our perspective, which is like we're both comedians, and in the 
comedy world in like uh, in green rooms before shows that's all we do is sort of make fun of each other because after uh, we were you know making fun of the making light of the situation but uh, I, you know, we did also mention like, I, I was very optimistic after the game against Portugal, seeing <coughs> seeing uh, uh, the talent from uh, a lot of the youth players that had never been called up before Absolutely. And, and how confident and how much they, they really represented the country, especially in a situation where, they, uh, yeah, they know people are definitely disappointed and very upset. So, uh, yeah, I, I did see the there, there was a video that U.S. soccer put out on Twitter about uh, uh, of you sort of, uh, I guess, giving uh, giving a speech. Uh, I don't know, it was maybe during a, tr a video training session or something like that, but you did mention about how disappointed everybody was, uh, but about just generally about looking forward. And it was, uh, maybe it's, it's just a new voice. I had never heard you, uh, uh, you know, speak to players before and things like that. I had n never really seen that on that public of a stage, but it was, it did leave me, uh, more optimistic about the future of U.S. soccer. So I did want to applaud you for that. Yeah, least. he actually. Well, thank you. Yeah, he nutmegged his you. he nutmegged his girlfriend immediately after that. So <laughs> you really inspired him. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the the youth players, and and when when the first roster came out, um, I specifically uh, was very upset after the loss at Trinidad. I don't think I'm alone. Um, <laughs> And when, you know, the first thing I said was, and that's it, if somebody over the age of 25 even gets a call up after this for the next four years, <clears throat> we're wasting our time. And I think that that's probably not just hyperbole, but probably in the anger. But I will say that when I saw the uh, lineup come out and I saw some of the guys that we've seen before, like your Ali Bedoyas, and even someone like CJ Sapong, who we really haven't seen, and really I've got to eat my words there because he played <clears throat> incredibly. What was some of the reasoning behind that? Was it important for you to have some veterans in that in that sort of moment to lead some of the youth? Or was yeah. there a specific reason why we didn't just go, let's just bring in the U-20 and below? Yeah, no, it, it was that. I mean, I think, you know, in all my years, uh, I've, I've been doing this for a while, and I've been around, fortunately, I've been around a lot of teams and championship teams, teams that win. And this goes all the way back to when I was a regional coach, to college coach, to professional coach. You know, the blend of, of, of of team that you have to have, in my opinion, has to be a blend that uh, covers a few things. Covers certainly talent. You need quality. Uh, you need uh, experience and leadership. And then you need younger players that have energy that may not have the perspective or, or experience that the older players have. But you need that blend. And when I put this roster together, <clears throat> as a coach, you want to – First and foremost, you want to compete. You want to put out a product that will, on the day, compete and and win and try to win. I mean, even though we all say, oh, this game against Portugal, look, if they don't win, it's not a big deal, you know, as long as blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, that sounds good. But at the end of the day, we, we all are competitors. So part of the thinking of this roster was to put out a team that will compete uh, and, and, and keep it um, – Top heavy with young players, which I think we did, and obviously, who was available. So there were players within MLS that were still in the playoffs that I said, no, we can't take them. They're still playing. Uh, there are certain guys that had injuries that were younger that weren't available, um, and 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 the guys that I put in the experience category that would show some leadership. Within that group were the guys like Ali Bedoya, Tim Ream, C.J. Sapong. Uh, we needed a, a forward. We needed a target, and he had a great year. Uh, he's will he be in the next cycle? Won't he be in the next cycle? Eh, you know, who knows? I don't have a crystal ball. But for this particular game, to have a guy like Ali Bedoya uh, come off the bench or give us a hand to preserve a tie or win the game or provide leadership behind the scenes, I thought was very important. Um, C.J. Sapong, again, rewarding him for a great year. We needed a forward. And um, th that's just two examples. You know, I, I, uh, I, I told you I listened to your podcast, so let, let's clarify a couple things. One, one oh, thing boy. is Josh Sargent <laughs> came in injured, so he, couldn't, he wasn't even listed on the, on the playing roster. He had a quadricep injury, so he wasn't available. Otherwise, maybe he would have been a, a guy to use. And, and C.J. Sapong... Uh, put in such a shift at the 75th minute, I thought he was going to combust. 
So we had to get him off. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and we needed another forward. Dom Dwyer was a guy that, um, you know, has, has experience too. So <laughs> that's the thinking going into it. But, but primarily it was about what's next in the future of, of the game, and, and that's why you saw the Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney's, you know, Cameron Carter Vickers, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I thought, I thought, I thought they, those guys passed the test tremendously. Is there, is there a bit of an issue um, with, and not, not, this question is not deeper than what specifically what I'm asking, just some of the guys are training, like, you know, Weston McKinney, Haji Wright, some of those guys are training over at Schalke. Some of the other guys are training in other teams in Europe that play other styles. Tyler Adams is here uh, with the Red Bulls in New York. Uh, is it difficult to sort of, when you get them all on a national team, to get them all on the same page because they're learning such different, you know, um, systems and techniques? So you guys are comedians? That's a great question. That's a really good <laughs> soccer this. question. I'm I gotta, impressed with I got to be honest, my head hurts. <laughs> 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 You know what? It's a, it's a it, no. Honestly, it's a great question, and it's a real challenge. It's a it's a real challenge uh, for a national team coach uh, to bring in a group of players from uh, all over the world. Frankly, uh, you got you, you got to speak like the, twelve languages to yeah. talk to these guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all do speak English. Most of them, okay. pretty yeah. pretty good, pretty good. Um, you know, to to. Well, to, to get on the same soccer language, because you're right. They're getting a lot of information from their club teams. You know, um, I'll give you an example. As a defender, you know, some teams play zonally. Some play, some play four in the back. Some play three in the back. Um, you know, s some coaches want certain players in positions to be more aggressive getting forward. I could go on and on. So when we bring the groups together, you know, we need to get right after it in terms of, What's this group going to look like? What are we working on? What's the plan going into this week and this game and so on? And, uh, it, you know, it's a challenge. And, and what needs to happen, you know, in the, what I call the cycle, is that every time that group comes in, of course there will be some changes, but every time the majority of that group comes in, their starting point <clears throat> is where they left off as opposed to starting all over again. And... Um, you know, we only had the team 10 months. If we had the team longer, I think that communication, that whole uh, sy symmetry maybe is the word, the whole group would, would have been a little more on the same page uh, over a longer time frame, I guess I would say. So to your point, it, it is a challenge, um, but that's all part of the national team makeup. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, we should, should we get, I mean, we should, I know you've been talking about it a lot, but we, we have to get to like, what, ha what happened? Why, why were here in the first place? Yeah. Right. Um, this, uh, you know, we talked about it a lot, everyone, uh, you know, I think this, uh, you know, the, the United States men's national team missing out on the world cup is, <laughs> is a, is a thing that a lot of us, uh, never experienced, you know, for, for yeah, uh, no, not since I was a very small child. <clears throat> so what, uh, I guess, Maybe we you can uh, summarize like wh where where how you feel now what you think the the future of U.S. soccer is uh, and and what was that ex experience like and how how do you feel uh, what what you could have done differently things like that yeah like what's one thing you think you personally could have done differently what I Dave Sarakin could have done differently yes. Well, I, you know, let me address a few of the questions. Well, first and foremost is um, how do, you ask me how I feel now. You know, I, I, I'm I'm feeling more hopeful, but the taste and the the wound isn't healed. Of course, it's going to take a while for all of us. Um, more so, probably on the inside than the outside, in terms of people, you know, that that were a part of this on the inside is what I'm referring to. Um, you know, the I don't have I don't have easy easy answers on all of this. Um, at the end of the day, we needed one point somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, um, and and it it, it it didn't happen. You know, when we as a staff came on board in January, uh, the first two games were zero points, and we knew we knew going through the next uh, nine ten months. It, it could end up going to the end. And the reason, 
you know, people on the outside don't really understand how CONCACAF has changed. And maybe now they do because there's been a lot of discussion. But, you know, these teams that we play are not pushovers. These teams are very difficult. They're much improved. They're better coached. They're better, you know, financed in terms of their facilities and so on and so forth. So, you know, these games are, are very tricky games. Whereas in the past, I think, I, think, I think the competition was a little bit different in the past cycles, but it's gotten harder. And no one, would, you, no one will know what it's like to go to Honduras and Panama to play and, unless you're there. You just don't know. And it's easy for people on the outside to go, oh, come on, you know, how hard can that be? It's hard. It's not easy. So, so we knew going into it that it could end up uh, going to the end. And, um, you know, I, what, I, what would I have done differently? Honestly, you know, we lost two games the entire year. Um, they were important games, obviously, but we lost two games. We won a Gold Cup. Uh, we thought we had identified the players that could get the job done, and I still believe we did. I don't think there were a whole lot of people on the outside, people, when I say people, players that weren't involved, uh, that you could go back and go, boy, I wish, I wish I had chosen him. Now that's a that's a that's a discussion point, you know, um, on several players. But that's what coaches' decisions are all about. A lot of it had to do with injury and form when you formulate your your roster. So by the end, <clears throat> you know, we thought our preparation going into uh, the Panama game was superb. We, uh, I thought the, the execution of the game was superb. We got a great result. And then you start to plan for the next game against Trinidad. And the idea was if everyone recovers, which we felt they did, if everybody came out healthy, we don't think we have to make changes. And the only thing that I would say if, you know, you, you're, you've asked the question, what would I have done differently? You know, would I have maybe, you know, uh, maybe maybe added a, a guy like Kellen Acosta next to Michael Bradley to give our midfield another body to help help in that regard? And you know, but but our mindset isn't to go in for a tie. It's never been that way. Bruce has never done it that way. I've never done it that way. U.S. Uh, your mentality is is yes, a tie is great, but. Um, you know, you can't tell your team just, hey, guys, we're just going to tie this game because right. then you're sending out the message um, that you don't want your team to play, you're afraid they're going to make mistakes. There's too many things, uh, traps within that message that I think goes the wrong way. So the idea was let's make sure we're solid, let's get after them, and the optics weren't good. I get it. Uh, it was a tough day on our part, and we, we just didn't get that part done, and there's no one to blame but ourselves. Uh, going forward, uh, like I said, I, I, think, um, I think there's a lot of hope within U.S. soccer. I don't believe we have to blow this thing up. You know, there's been a lot of chatter about this and that, and the only, the only positives from any of this is that it does lend itself to a lot of discussion. And uh, some of it's kind of nonsense, but that's – the way it is with in our business we we a lot of everybody's got opinions well, well, so I, I wouldn't i wouldn't just to wrap up this long this long-winded answer there's not a lot i don't think we would have changed uh over the nine or ten months uh of trying to you know bring this thing along we were behind the eight ball when we took it over we only had 10 months not an excuse that's the truth uh and um it, it proved to be more challenging than we thought at the end well, what do you, you were talking about all, all all the discussion and all the all the chatter uh, after uh, after the loss. W what do you think of that? I mean, you've been involved in soccer for a long time, Th especially uh, I know you've worked with Bruce for a long time. Uh, Bruce Arena was on. Uh, he did the 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 coverage. He was an analyst for uh, Fox Sports during the game. The, a lot of a lot of people didn't sit well with them. Uh, you know, what, what did you, do you have any opinion on, you know, some people were suggesting that he should hide in a cave forever and he shouldn't yeah. be, <laughs> he shouldn't be around. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm not of that opinion, but do you think it was, it was in poor taste to, to be on TV or, or not poor taste, but maybe tone deaf that, yeah, that was also some, yeah. uh, a thing people mentioned. 
Now that's a hard one for me to, to answer. First of all, I, I didn't see the broadcast. Um, you were busy so at the time. I, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You know, Bruce <laughs> yeah. is a big boy. And what were you doing? Own... What were you doing at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was tour, I was touring Lisbon at the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was a little busy that day, guys. Um, uh, you know, Bruce is a big boy. He's got to make uh, decisions that he feels he 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 can make and. You know, I'll leave that. I'll leave that opinion for for all, everyone else uh, to to decide. Um, but uh, that that's a hard one for me to even delve well, into, to be honest. Uh, what do you think of just now? The, 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 there seems to be a, a, a stronger like micro microscope on U.S. soccer, and and where where for a long time I feel like in 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 general uh, the general public didn't really not not they didn't care, but they, it wasn't. You know, if the U.S. made it, it was like, oh, yeah, they're supposed to make it. But now that they're not there, there's actually a lot of opinions and a lot of criticism. Do you feel like this is a, a better environment for U.S. soccer to grow as opposed to just kind of uh, being a little uh, uh, sort of ambiguous in, in, uh, in like the soccer scene, uh, in the sports scene in the country? No, I, I like I said, I, I think you know this. I've seen this sport. I mean, I used to. I come from the era where I used to play in the North American Soccer League, and and that's when there were no soccer stadiums, and you know we had uh, picket fences surrounding the fields, and so on and so forth. And I've seen since MLS has been in existence, this this league grow, the sport grow. You know, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the staff when we uh, went to the quarterfinals in the World Cup in 2002 and what, what the hysteria of all of that brought, and I've seen it grow since then to a point where, you know, soccer is really relevant. And, and, you know, I don't have to say it. Everyone knows, you know, all the markets, with the exception of a few, have soccer-specific stadiums. The league is growing, so on and so forth. And because of all that, the sport uh, it has gotten more relevancy. And I think I – think, these kinds of discussions are are very important and there are more people that care there are more gener another generation that's played the sport so i've seen it grow and and i think as i stated earlier <clears throat> uh as as though as as much as we're all gutted and we are gutted um that we're not going to the world cup believe me and it's a wound that won't heal for a while to have these discussions to have this kind of uh, back and forth um, is good now you know again some of the some of the I get people are upset and they're bitter and so forth but um, you know some of the negativism is a little unfounded in terms of some of the things that have come up but for the most part these kinds of, of topics and discussions are critical as we move forward because now we got to peel it all back and sort of take a real look and say okay what did we do well? What didn't we do well? And and that's in a very important piece to to improvement. So so I, I, I think I think the only silver lining of all of this is that is that we can now really dive in uh, and, and make certain adjustments as we move along that people feel are necessary. And like I said, I'm an optimistic guy. I, I, I know that uh, we're going to come out of this. It's just in, in the short term, it's, it's, it, it doesn't feel so good. Now, you know, one of the things as comedians, when we're on stage and it's not going well, that's called bombing. And sometimes uh, it happens to me very rarely. I want you to know that. Uh, <laughs> but when it happens, you know, especially when it's a good show and everyone else is killing and you go up and you bomb, one of the first things, one of the, one of the most important things that we do is sort of go back. We typically record every set we're doing. We typically go back and listen. And even though those jokes have worked before, we think to ourselves, what did we do wrong? Was it something we did wrong on that, on that show specifically? Or am I headed down a wrong path and I make changes? You've referenced um, that things don't need to be blown up. I also agree. Uh, personally, I don't know how Christian feels. I get where that that feeling comes I, from. I think you should quit comedy. Yeah, That's no, we're talking about <laughs> soccer, man. Uh, but a lot of people think everything needs to change. I don't necessarily think that, but it's, I think it's also naive of us to sit here and say that nothing needs to change. Even if it's minute, you know, we should look back and think some things need to change. If you were the soccer czar, if you were the head of all of soccer, not just the president, you were just the guy who ran everything, any decision Dave Sarakin made uh, was, was implemented, 
Is there one thing that you think you would implement moving forward or one thing that you would change about the course we've been on, whether it's something that is either failed or just not efficient enough so that you don't throw anyone under the bus? Well, I'd give myself a raise. That's number one. <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> um, no. Uh, boy, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a, a tough question. Uh, Tough question to answer just in in one bullet point. I I would say this, though. I think think one of the things that that is going to be important as we move forward as as a soccer country but also as a federation is um, to take a real look at at the mechanics of uh, how soccer decisions are made because I think we have really, really bright people uh, in leadership positions. I do think we need more technical people in leadership positions. Technical by technical, I mean real soccer heads that that um, that that make policy, make decisions, choose, you know, choose coaches, you know, the whole runs the whole gamut in youth development, so on and so forth. We we we've had some people here and there, <clears throat> but I think I think that's a critical piece uh, in in how we evaluate uh, our structure, how we evaluate what's going on at the, the academy levels <clears throat> and in the coaching education department and all the rest, because it's not just one thing. It, it's, it's several things, and it's, I've touched upon it, whether it's you know, youth development, uh, coaching education, as far as you know, um, training coaches, the whole bit, uh, all of that needs to to improve, and in order for that to improve, you need you need good leadership to to get that sorted out. And and I think as we move forward, a lot of that will get sort of uh, you know not attacked, but start starting to really delve into that that end of things. And um, you know we've as I've said, we've grown tremendously. The academy system's grown tr- tremendously, but I think. We still need to develop, you know, I'm old school. I still think, you know, developing an eye with coaches to to find talent, to nurture talent. You know, I'll give you one quick little story. When I first started out coaching at UVA, um, we started seeing kids coming from an area of Florida, Clearwater, Florida. All of a sudden, these kids were, were why are they coming from this spot? And as you delve deeper... It turned out that Steve Highway, who used to be a famous Liverpool player, moved to Clearwater, Florida. And he developed a culture and environment in Clearwater, Florida that developed a club that developed these players. And so it took one guy in one little market to to do the right thing. And if we have hundreds of those guys throughout our country, and they are getting better, to create that culture and create that environment to start developing, and not only the players but the coaches, we get better as a national team. And then the last piece to it all is Major League Soccer. Major League Soccer has been tremendous for um, the development of players, but too many now what's happening is less and less Americans are getting opportunities and more and more of the foreign players are getting opportunities. That's going to be an issue that needs to be addressed coming forward too because I'll tell you what, you look at the Panama roster, the Honduran roster, the Trinidad roster, they're all playing in Major League Soccer, so they're all getting better too. And so that's going to be something as we move forward to, to tackle as well. I, I think if, uh, if, I, if I was the soccer czar, the first thing I would do is give Messi American citizenship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that might be my first move. <laughs> you know how mean they are to you in Argentina? <laughs> Won't happen here, buddy. Uh, and also, you had mentioned you want te- more technical people. I mean, remember those two really smart questions we asked? I think... <laughs> You have space for a little levity inside the U.S. soccer. Uh, it's it's interesting that you say uh, uh, just about how how one person could have had such a strong influence on on, on you know on, on creating a culture. I, I, I know I was uh, reading something about uh, the cost of accreditation in in the U.S. Like, to get your coaching cr- credentials yeah. for U.S. soccer. It, it, it's apparently like like nine times more expensive than it is in Germany? This might be like a very serious question, uh, right. but uh, it, uh, apparently there, there seems to be an issue when it comes to coaching that it, it's a difficult thing to get involved in uh, from my perspective. I know very little about it, but I can ask you about it. So is there uh, uh, maybe a financial 
challenge or when a it, hurdle or yeah. hurdle when it comes to getting into coaching in, in U.S. soccer? Well, um, you know, anybody can can coach, but I think you're referring to the U.S. soccer coaching educational part of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there, in the licensing program, there are all sorts of levels. You start at a low level and you continue to move up to your A level. And, and there are costs associated with with attending a coaching course. That is true. Um, I don't I don't know enough about it currently. I haven't really delved into it currently as to what that cost is. But there there is a cost associated with those coaching licenses. But I think I don't think that's that unusual. I think that's probably the case throughout the world. Um, if you go over to the get your UEFA A or B license and, you know, there's a cost associated with that. I think there's always um, compensation for those that, that maybe have a need and that sort of thing. But I don't think it's any any more unusual in this country than it is anywhere else, to be honest. Yeah, I know th- th- there's definitely fees everywhere, but it's it's apparently more expensive in the U.S., uh, according to what I've read. I'm just, I, I'm basically, I'm just sort of asking, like, the we we have the the pay to play sort of debate where that you know everyone says like we should get rid of pay to play in the U.S. and and it's happening it's starting to go away uh, a little bit but it's almost like it is to pay to coach you know is that it, it, if it was a little bit cheaper do you think that the that that we would have better coaches in U.S. soccer I mean it's a very it's a I think it's a, a yeah a, a question I, I hear I sorry to interrupt I, no. I hear what you're saying but yeah. I also think that coaching. A coaching course uh, isn't the end-all, be-all for coaching. In fact, you know, it supplements a lot. I think I, I can tell you from my, my personal experience, um, I, I did the licensing courses, and, and there, there was a lot of value in it. But the, the true value of, of coaching is coaching, and that is uh, whether you, you do it in, at the collegiate level, the club level, amateur level, uh, there's no, you can't replicate a classroom or a lecture uh, the, the way you can as far as being on the field and working with a team every day. So um, the, the, the licensing piece is a supplement uh, to all that, but I think if, if you guys, if you guys want to go out and coach, uh, you got to just get out on the field and begin and start trial and erroring it. And and um, with your comedy and your coaching, I think you'd succeed. But as far <laughs> as the, the licensing piece, uh, it, it supplements a lot, but it's sure. not the end all be all. Yeah, if we had our, if our, our licenses, I think we'd be like crazy, like soccer nerds, just glasses like, uh, I would have taken yeah. that penalty quite differently, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or also, do you guys have a level Z that we could start at? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now, Dave, we, you've been on the phone with us for a while, and I know we told you it was going to be about 20 minutes, and you've been on for about <laughs> half an hour or more. So uh, you came from Rochester. You mentioned it. Uh, you know, you're living in California now. You're an assistant, uh, head coach with the Chicago Fire. You've traveled a lot of places, specifically Rochester. Uh, the reason that name uh, that springs a, a light, it starts a light bulb in my head or brightens a light bulb in my head for something called a garbage plate. Now, for everyone who's listening who thinks I just offended you, <laughs> uh, could you, could you, one, explain to people with this magical food dishes <laughs> and two could you explain how do you order your uh, garbage plate well i gotta tell you uh, the garbage cl- plate is is and i said this uh, earlier it, it's on par you know rochester's famous for a bunch of things you know xerox started there <laughs> kodak bausch and Laum, and the garbage plate i say in that order <laughs> all right? on the same level <laughs> all at the same level yes uh the garbage plate i think was founded at nick tahoe's uh in rochester new york and uh it, it comprises basically every food group you could have between a bun um and so that's right there's hot it, dogs it, in there too right what's that there's also hot dogs in there right there's there's hamburgers hot dogs french fries <laughs> onion rings a fried egg, I think cheese, and I, it's been a while. Um, 
Everything but uh, a bagel and lox, I think, is in between the, 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 the buns. So I know the big thing is do you get it with one cheeseburger, two cheeseburgers? I Look, we have your photo pulled up. We just pulled it down now because we're going to put up a photo of this garbage plate. But uh, you don't look like a fat guy, right? You look like a pretty skinny guy, so you probably don't order a crazy one. But do you go two cheeseburger patties, one cheeseburger patties, you know, patty? What do you do? Well, if I were go, if I, today it would be one. Back in the day, it would probably be two. Um, and it would usually be between the hours of 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. is when I would probably have a garbage plate. And that was back in the day, fellas. Now, you know, I, I'm plant-based. I, I don't think I'd go near Nick Tahoe's. Oh. I, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could. I, well, maybe I would do it. <laughs> well, everyone right now is looking at this glorious uh, food item. We see some uh, hash browns. We see grease lining the side of the plate. Uh, it looks like some type of au jus and uh, slow cooked meat sauce. I, look, I know, I know you're plant based, so, buddy, I'll have two, one in your honor. <laughs> Man, this looks well, like. Rochester, Rochester's good for a lot of things, and, and junk food is one of them. They're, they're hot dogs, hamburgers. You know, they have pork hot dogs in Rochester. Did you know that? God, the, God bless Rochester. Those, the white hot dogs. Not, not many places can get a white hot dog. I'm looking at this for the first time, and it looks like it's something they pulled out of a car exhaust. It, just really <laughs> <laughs> it does look like you let a four-year-old cook dinner. But I will say this. Uh, one, look, I know uh, Kodak left, Bosch and Lom left, Xerox left. <laughs> Coach, even you left, but you know what? The garbage plate never left Rochester. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, Coach Dave uh, Sarakin, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us, and it was an absolute honor. Thank you so much. We appreciate it so, so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. I enjoyed it. Take care. All right. Take it easy, buddy. All right, guys. Bye -bye. Uh, we'll be right back right after this. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for listening. We just wanted to break in real quick and ask you to do us a huge favor. Yeah, all we want, to, all we want you to do is just uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is the, oh, man. That's the big... Look, we're working... We work very hard on this podcast. We're also making a, a very concerted effort to put out some more video content for you guys. And we want to get some people li uh, watching those videos as well. Yeah, I mean, right now, you got about like 30 more seconds before the second segment comes up. So I beg you, if you're on your phone, you can do other stuff while you're listening to this podcast. Why don't you click on YouTube? the YouTube app. Why don't you put in soccer, cooligans, and just hit that subscribe button. And if you can, hit that little bell, that notification lets you know every time we put up a video. We're working really hard to give you guys at least one video a week. We have a video right now that's called FIFA the News that we're playing FIFA and we're seeing, we're having that predict the biggest match. And we're talking about a lot of stuff that's happening on the news in the video and there's a lot of cool editing that's involved. It takes a long time, but it's really, really funny. Exactly. So, uh, look, we're doing a lot of work. We want just a little bit of validation. A little, yeah, that's little, it. Just a little bit. Is that that hard? <laughs> that hard come on we're, so we're just two two little comedians <laughs> yeah. want a little like too poor i would like some more please <laughs> yeah. some more followers and subscribers on our youtube so yeah. if you can hit the like button comment on some of the videos if you can at the very minimum hit the subscribe and maybe even share it with your friends it would be absolutely amazing yeah baby oh we're back and that we just spoke to dave there, kid. Isn't, isn't that crazy? Isn't that the wildest thing that's ever happened on this <laughs> podcast? It, uh, it, as of yet, yeah, it might be the crazy. It, it, it might be one of those uh, things where somebody's gonna contact Dave Sar Sarakin and be like, "Hey, hey, man, nope, don't do that again." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, did you? Uh, who approved this? <laughs> Oh my God, that's crazy! Uh, well, thank you again, uh, uh, Coach Mister Sarkin, for uh, for blessing us uh, with with the the I mean the, the 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 amount of credibility I think we have now is uh, I don't know I don't know do, do we have any credibility? Right I mean, now? well, we're we're out here. We're gonna start calling some shots now. <laughs> okay, we're running things now at U.S. Soccer. All right, we're that's gonna. It. We, we're gonna give uh, Eric Winalda uh, and Cal Martino run for their money for U.S. Uh, president, <laughs> all right? For president of U.S. Soccer. And we're not gonna run. We're just gonna give them a run because we want their money. Is uh, what we're gonna do? <laughs> yo, yo, run that, run that presidency. Yeah, <laughs> let me see, let me <laughs> see what is... you got in these cupboards, my dude. <laughs> that shit is mine now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Where, where's the Oval Office? And they're like, I think you have the wrong presidency. 
<laughs> oh man, uh, that, it, incredibly uh, uh, just gracious and kind of him to come on uh, to, to to talk to two comedians uh, I, and and to and to let us make a couple jokes and and I I can't stop laughing at the fact that he heard us on he listened to the Horvath episode. <laughs> Not only that, <laughs> called us out on it. I mean, <laughs> which is great. I I love it. I think it's hilarious. I think there's a, uh, I I think there's a a space for us to be able to have a little bit of fun, and and I'm glad that he could. Uh, I think there's a there's an interesting dynamic, right? Because obviously, being the coach to 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 young men. Right, uh, who who are not fully formed uh, adults necessarily, right? Where uh, they're going to make mistakes and they're still learning. They're I still thought growing. you were. I thought you were going to say that gave him the experience to speak to us, who are two not fully formed <laughs> adults. <laughs> sure, he has a lot of experience with immature. Yeah. Men. That's what He's like, I'm well prepared to talk to these two guys. <laughs> but but he did defend his his players like he was uh, a much like a fatherly figure, where he's like, I felt I felt terrible for him. Uh, and even though he knows that we're joking, he still has to be like, you, you know, he has to he has to look out for for uh, uh, for, you know, his his uh, pupil uh, to some to some extent. So I I respected that a lot. But I think it, it is I, it's definitely the first time somebody uh, in a in a position of authority was like, yo, I, I heard the shit you was talking, dog. It one of the things when he was like, so I listened to your last episode, and in the back of my head, I was like, that couldn't have possibly been the Horvath episode, could it? And then he was like, Horvath, and I was like, we have turned a corner as an American soccer society. Oh my goodness! Where the head coach is on a comedians podcast, two comedians podcast, yelling Horvath back to us. It was just. That's a great moment. That's a, I, was, I think my favorite moment of 2017 so far. That was uh, made me so happy. Yeah, when everyone else is like 2017 sucks, I'm like, there was a lot of bad moments, but did you hear the episode <laughs> of Cooligans Podcast? Okay, I don't care who's getting uh, losing jobs for whatever uh, sexual harassment. This I don't terrorism that. Great year. I could care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of bad things happen, but I think we could all say one great thing happened. <laughs> the great moment. Uh, Dave Sarkin yelled for that. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a, what an awesome dude and what a sport and you know, whatever I, you know, people are going to ask us forever how this happened. And we're going to tell you exactly the truth. We have no clue. Okay. <laughs> but it happened, but it did. And now we move on uh, from there. So, so, yeah, we're doing this, obviously, over the phone. This is after uh, the the two matches of the um, Eastern and Western Conference Finals or Championships. That's uh, right. There were two matches, but you could have taken uh, a long nap uh, for the first one. Uh, I feel like I did. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately fell asleep for about maybe 12 minutes uh, during in the first half of, of, uh, of Columbus, Toronto. Uh, so let's let's start with this game because we got to get it out of the way quickly. Uh, a nil nil, uh, leg first leg of a playoff game. Uh, we did tweet out uh, that this this Eastern Conference playoff game reminded us of a Western Conference playoff game. Yes, it was very very uh, similar. They swapped uh, sides. They swapped uh, energy. <laughs> That's right. So you know, usually in in Major League Soccer. The Western Conference has been pretty dominant the last couple of years, uh, and this this year the Eastern Conference, uh, you know, uh, uh, grabbed that, uh, you know, sort of took took that took that role. And uh, for today, they, they they thought they at least for the first leg they would uh, they would switch it up a little bit. It's a little little and, throwback Tuesday. Yeah, a lot of people didn't know what to expect for this game given uh, the what was I think. Uh, 15 day layoff, 16 day layoff, something like that. 16 days uh, and no Josie and no uh, Javinko, you know, uh, I, that's right. The one thing I took away from this is uh, Columbus sort of ruined every opportunity to score, whether it's a crossbars or slightly wide or, uh, you know, just some bad passes uh, and Toronto without their two best players, still incredibly dangerous. Yeah, I thought um, I thought both played pretty cautiously, and you you, you noticed it with 
their defensive midfielders. Uh, I, you know, Michael Bradley and um, uh, I think uh, and, Va- and the Vasquez was more up front, but Michael Bradley never really uh, went forward to end- to play any real offense. Uh, uh, if, when it, for Columbus, um, they 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 just the majority uh, for the majority of the game, both teams played kind of with four people up front. They left the defensive midfielders back. Nobody wanted to get caught on a counter. Uh, I think they both were like, uh, yeah, let's just not make a mistake where, where we see, you know, those Western conference playoff games that we saw. This is, this is exactly what happened. Right. Like sitting back, playing safe, playing safe. So, uh, anytime, any, any, uh, any, uh, anytime either team had an opportunity to get, uh, in the final third, they were a dozen, you know, a dozen. I'm exaggerating clearly because there's only 11 guys, but there were so many uh, players, uh, you know, of the other team shirt. There were a bunch of red shirts in the box uh, when uh, when Columbus had the ball, and there were a bunch of yellow shirts in the box when, when Toronto did. So th- nothing. There's, n- this game was like, you know what? Nobody's having fun today. Right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody's out to have a This was time. the your mom actually turned the car around <laughs> and nobody actually went to the theater. Okay. Yeah, they were like, "All right guys." Toronto was like, "All right, we're we're taking this car right back to Austin. Yeah. You guys, you better behave." <laughs> it was I mean, probably the most probably the most entertaining uh thing was the fans booing every time the ball every. got even near Michael Bradley, what do you think about that? A lot of people are saying that they they feel like you know you shouldn't be booing him. What do you think? Uh, no, I'm totally fine booing. It's it's how we all feel, you know. I I, I think uh, I think Greg Vanny was even booing him at times. Yeah, when he was, when <laughs> he was he really getting into it. He was Greg Vanny. He's like, I'm so <laughs> like, sorry. What's this... everybody What's everybody booing about? You know what? Let me get in on this. It just so. looks so much fun. It looked like so much fun, Michael. I'm so sorry. No, that's. Look, uh, that that comes to the territory. You you know you had a a, a terrible loss. If, when you're playing in America, that's uh, that's what you better expect. So did you hear what Michael Bradley didn't... said at the end of the match? I did hear what Michael Bradley said at the end of the match. The little uh, shade. So I mean, a little shade. I mean, it's a little bit more than shade. That's right. He covered the sun. <laughs> I think it's straight up disrespect. Uh, and and a low blow in my opinion because after the game. My, uh, Michael Bradley, he was asked by a reporter uh, how he felt about the plight of, of Columbus Crew and the whole Save the Crew uh, campaign that, that the supporters are, are doing right now. And he said uh, that he said that he feels bad for the quote unquote small group of loyal supporters. Uh, and then he added, quote, you cannot deny uh, you cannot deny the fact that things have really fallen behind End quote. What does that mean? Why do you need to say that? I got to be honest. No one knows exactly what it means, but everyone knows exactly what it means. <laughs> you know? Well, it, it's it's like your your job is to play the team, right? Your 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 job is to play the eleven players that are fielded in front of you. You're not playing against, uh, you know, public opinion. You're not playing against uh the front office. You're not playing against Anthony Precourt uh, or the the city of Columbus and the financial, uh, uh, you know, the financial board uh, uh, of the team or anything like that. So this seems uh, it seems out of pocket, you know, and, it, and I, not- is it though? They boot him. They boot him every time <laughs> you're allowed to get one shot. He didn't go out there and smack anyone. He didn't kick anyone. He waited, he waited, he let you get all <laughs> your shit in, and the moment he had the opportunity, he hit you with a, with like, it's like a guy who got punched 38 times, but the other guy just threw one, like, really solid, like, thumb <laughs> in, like, a pressure point, and just collapsed the guy who punched him. That's exactly what that was. You know, part of me, just because I love banter and I love that back and forth, I kind of applaud this. Uh... I mean, no, I don't. I mean, it's it just, it, it, I think it, in any other instance of like uh, a team not uh, on the, on the verge of, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting deported uh, for lack of a better word, <laughs> they, uh, it's, it, it, it seems, I don't know. It seems overly harsh uh, because you, what, what you, what he wasn't, the reason he's getting booed, what he's involved with is, Clearly, uh, he knows what he did. he knows what he did wrong. 
Okay. So uh, it, it's, it's in my mind, I'm like, you know what? Accept it. You know, I, I'm not saying be the most like remorseful in the world, uh, but he doesn't need to do this. If he, if he wants to be the captain of the U S team, especially playing how many important games has, has he played in Matt free stadium? It, it is not, it's, it's not a place that you should insult, right? If, if we're trying to uh, uh, show some respect for, for how much, uh, how important it's been uh, for, for the, the, the men's national team history, even the women's national team history, like how it, it, it's just not a place you want to say something like that. So it comes off to me more disrespectful and unnecessary uh, given that the reason he's being booed, he knows why he's being booed. And he's going to have to deal with that for a while. Yeah, I mean, uh, but- I got to be honest. It's not like if he would have did what you said and been respectful and so on and so forth or just not even been snide, it wouldn't have gained him anything. The fans wouldn't stop booing him then. So, you know what? Lean in. If, if <laughs> no, everyone, I- you know, if everyone looks at you like you're the bad guy, be the bad guy. Uh, okay. I mean, then does he want Does he want to when If you're the captain of the U.S. team, isn't shouldn't you sort of compose yourself a certain way? Shouldn't you be a, 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 a like a pillar of, of 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 a leader of men to some degree? You should conduct yourself a certain way. We don't like, expect not... that out of our president. Why would we expect that out <laughs> I mean, of a know, guy we, on we our normally, team? We normally did. Uh, but did uh, lot, did that was a long time ago, buddy. Past tense. I mean, it's been a it's been a rough year. But you know what? <laughs> Still, Dave Sarakin said Horvath on our podcast, so you know what? <laughs> yeah. All good. It's all- Everything's fine in the end. <laughs> uh, I think the um, – I mean, oh, look, people can have different uh, opinions on it. I'm not – it's not the worst thing in the world for him to say this. He, he wasn't like, uh, oh, what do I think of Columbus? Uh, you know, what, what their situation – Oh fuck Columbus! Yeah, I don't he, give a sh- he, he wasn't like that. sink it into the ground. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't like go that far, but he knows what he did, and it was a maybe a little, little cheap shot. And yeah, maybe, it was a yeah. cheap shot, but like in a in the best way possible. I mean, if it were me, I don't think I would have had that much grace. I would have been like, yo, I hope they move this team. I hope the Columbus Blue Jackets <laughs> are in Austin. I hope Ohio <laughs> State ends up in Austin. I hope your mother ends up in Austin. I hope everybody you love. I hope your Thanksgiving dinner ends up in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, it, it's um, it, you know, I, look, I can live with it, but he probably shouldn't have done it. But the, the, really, I think the only great chance in this game uh, was by Harrison Offal, who had uh, that that um, sort of clear that bad clearance from uh, Drew Moore, uh, kicks it right into uh, 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 Bono's uh, Bono's face, uh, uh, not Bono. <laughs> Bon, I mean, it'd be great if Bono was, uh, you know, between the pipes. It's like, why was he out there? <laughs> but, uh, Bono, he uh, he didn't really have to do much this game. Both keepers didn't really have anything to do. I, I think I think Columbus had a way better uh, chance to win this game. They, uh, especially towards the end, it really it looked like they were trying to get a goal. But uh, now it looks like the second leg. Uh, we, we know how uh, rowdy uh, BMO Field can be. Uh, I think Toronto's going to just wipe the floor with Columbus. They had every opportunity, obviously, with without uh, uh, Jovinko there, without Josie Altador there. This was uh, even if yeah, they this was the their game, only chance, really, to even snag chance. a few a uh, few like uh, points, maybe. Unless, unless we have enough, uh, maybe Columbus does what they kind of did to Atlanta, and uh, you know, just sort of bunkers down plays defensive, go to extra time, maybe go to penalties again. I, I, I don't think Columbus has any any real offensive uh, threat that's going to sort of get past how good Toronto's defense is. Their midfielders, uh, yeah, just Bradley, Vasquez, and then their center back. They're all just – they're all beasts. I mean, nobody's really – it's tough to score on them uh, in the first place. So – uh, even and you know they they didn't have their two best players and they, for the most part they they handled everything pretty well. Yeah, I mean, look, the one the only weak link I think on Toronto was Bettishore in those first like twenty minutes. He just looked completely out of place. Sixteen days off will do that to you. 
You know, yeah. if I took you 16, how to play. Yeah, if I took 16 days off from doing stand up and somebody handed me a microphone, I'd be like, wait, what are my jokes again? You know, what do I usually <laughs> say up here? So, <laughs> who <yeah>. am I? <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? Um, <laughs> Why was everybody staring at me? You yeah. <laughs> what does anybody else want to do this? Because clearly you're looking at me like, I don't know what I'm doing. But uh, it must be tough. But I mean, he, he sort of settled himself down a little bit. Uh, he still had kind of a sketchy game. Uh, but really, there's not much to talk about other than that awful, uh, you know, I'd miss. And, uh, you know, Kakuta Mane maybe comes in, starts the next match, right, and attacks better sure. Maybe that helps. But I think I think what you're saying is right. I honestly think Toronto is going to, uh, you know, take complete control of this. I don't think Columbus is going to uh, find a way to win. But remember, all they need is the away. If they if they if it's tied one one, they win. So yeah. wait, no, I'm not sure. Does do away goals count for no. this round? Yes, yes. If they if it's one one, Columbus would uh, would move on to the to the final. So anything can happen. Anything can happen whatsoever. Anything can happen. I, I mean, I I just don't see, um, I don't see Columbus not allowing a goal you know and i don't see or, or not allowing at least two goals toronto i mean we saw last year the, the the game against montreal in in the in the semifinal uh in the conference final and that was what they 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 were down remember they were down three two aggregate yeah and they ended up winning like six five or something i mean the, the game went nuts there were so many goals scored uh so you know when we know that when Toronto uh, like needs even if this is not a comeback or anything, but like if they need to get some goals uh, in this scenario, you know, unless they're playing the Seattle Sounders, uh, I, I think they'll be fine. You know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, so it looks like uh, honestly, yeah. I th- I have a feeling the MLS Cup final is going to be in Toronto again. God damn it! How dare you? <laughs> You know, I, I thought mean, MLS, I thought MLS, I thought everyone said that MLS, like, you know, botches this whole thing. Like, they rigged the whole thing. Could they not have rigged it <laughs> for a Florida team? Please. You know, there's no okay. Florida team. I guess Orlando didn't even make yeah, the playoffs. Okay. Okay. LA? Rig, it, rig it for the Miami Fusion. Yeah, guys. yeah, come on, someone. Just <laughs> warm weather, but not Houston. <laughs> Is that possible? Um. So, uh, let, so let's talk about the the second game, the Western Conference. Uh, game Houston full against, of excitement. This one started off fun. This one was like, hey, I think MLS was like, uh, you know, uh, signaled in to the referee and was like, hey, uh, the, uh, the the Eastern Conference game was uh, was pretty whack. Uh, we need you to uh, turn this one up to yeah. to eleven. Oh, right over here. So uh, <laughs> make sure you get it popping because this one wasn't that good. <laughs> Although I, my favorite part was if MLS is rigging this, they're good writers because the moment the whistle blew on the first game, I flipped over to the Houston Seattle game and they immediately scored a goal. Gustav <laughs> sort of yeah. scored a goal immediately. So I was like, this is perfect timing. Everyone's like, and we're back into soccer. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the first goal was scored uh, off a corner by Gustav Svensson. Uh, the man who knocked out, who single-handedly knocked out Italy. You, you should have seen him. And when when the history books are written, they're gonna say Gustav Svensson, the Seattle Sounder, single-handedly mushed Keely in his in his dumb face and was like, "Yo, you ain't going nowhere." Uh, I, that's how I remember uh, the, the the game. In fact, uh, Gustav Svensson scoring proves that MLS <laughs> is better than all of Italy. That's right. Yeah, uh, so, we've said it before. It's one hundred percent true. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're not telling you anything you don't already know. <laughs> the Sarah can uh, agrees, yeah. by the way. <laughs> First goal, uh, Gustav Svensson, uh, great goal. I, you know, he usually he's not the guy you sort of expect uh, a header like that from. It, you know, you kind of the Chad Marshall, Roman Torres, Will Bruin, those are your guys. Uh, when it, but he he nailed it. Uh, you know, unmarked, did great. And and then the second goal, another header, Will Bruin across from Jovan Jones, and this was in the 42nd minute. Uh, so those two goals were great, but obviously the most controversial part of the match was the red card in the 28th minute from Jaleel Anibaba. There was a uh, a breakaway. Jovan Jones, obviously, when he's ahead of you, uh, most human beings are not catching up to that Trinidadian man. He's very very fast, uh, and Anibaba held his arm. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a, a sort of a decision of if we, he if he would get a yellow or a red, but it was uh, he was the last defender, denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity, 
uh, and and the red is what he deserved, I think. Uh, and that changed the entire game. So the old uh, dog zo penalty. Yeah, it, it. I thought for a second. I think in in when when I saw it live, I'm like, oh, maybe maybe it's a yellow. But Jovan Jones, he's he's clearly ahead, and and he. I I, I think um, Anibaba doesn't use an in, an incredible amount of force to stop. Uh, Joven Jones from from moving forward, but it was enough that it was it, it's still a clear denial and uh, and yeah, so he didn't do much complaining. Uh, but the 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 penalty by Nicoladero was uh, stopped by uh, Joe Ellis. Joe uh, Ellis, which, which sparked the angry go Joe Ellis, uh, you know, a uh, meme immediately on the internet. So I love that. But I did see that. And I heard the announcer saying that, you know, he looked over at someone on the sideline who pointed to the right um, or I guess to his uh, to his left, if you're uh, Joe Willis. But, uh, you know, when you see a penalty get stopped, you you immediately like, well, that was for no reason. You know, like <laughs> what was the purpose? I mean, if you're if you're Houston at that moment, you're like, all right, that was a good move. We lost the guy, but at least, we did, you know, they didn't advance the score a little bit. Somebody posted on Twitter that if the penalty is missed, the person who uh, was shown the red gets to come back on the on the, into the game, <laughs> which well, that'd be great. Know, which puts all the pressure on the goalkeeper now. It just makes it all their fault for something they didn't do. But I uh, I love that idea, to be honest, in the playoffs. I think that's such a great idea. <laughs> Uh well no uh, but I don't think it's never gonna it's happen. Really. It's funny. It's a funny idea. Uh, the, the yeah th- that was a uh, obviously a big moment and I and I thought that at that point the game was only one nil and I thought something would change uh, at at that moment I thought Houston could possibly either tie it or end the game two one. Going back to Seattle uh, down two one uh, would be a great result especially in that scenario. And but the fact that they were only down that they only lost this game two 0 is really a miracle. It's a uh, shock. But also is, those are two away goals. They have to win three 0 I mean, who gives a shit? <laughs> That's not happening they, in Seattle. Even if Seattle's they, just like get a Marta and park it right in front of the goal. <laughs> yeah, it's always a solid uh, move. I, I think uh, they uh, when they look at the uh, the in the expansion draft, uh, LAFC might take a Marta bus, uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for, for their for you know for a great center back uh, pairing. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, go, yeah, going back there, it's going to be pretty tough. But again, only only two nil, not impossible. I mean, I don't know. Like Roman Torres uh, got a got a yellow. Uh, he's going to be out for the second leg. Uh, also, but uh, Albert Elise is also going to be missing the second leg. He got, he got a, a, a for, for yellow card accumulation. So it's going to be tough, but no one doesn't expect uh, the Sounders to, to get through this fairly easily. They get one goal. They should be fine. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be, uh, you know, a repeat of last MLS Cup final. Honestly, it looks like it's going to be don't, Seattle. Don't. Don't sound so excited, Alexis. No, I mean, I mean, I'm happy for it. You know, I hope it's a better game than last year because, I, you know, I almost lost toes, <laughs> you know, to watch you guys not even try to shoot on goal. But wait, you almost lost toes or lost hose? I can't remember <laughs> no. what you said. All the, the hose were gone years ago. <laughs> the toes. <laughs> the toes is what I'm worried about now. Um, okay. The uh, it. I, I look at these games and part of me is just like, just get it over with. Let's just pick the MLS Cup <laughs> final and let's just get there and do it. But I think it's I think also because of the gap. I think it was that 16 day gap. They just got to find a way to finish this up before that break. It kills all the momentum, not just for the players, but for us as fans. You think if, if, if the playoffs um, up until the final is, is sorted out before the break and then the final being after the break, you think that's fine? Or you think it, sh- it should all end before the break? Part of me thinks that uh, you could do the final after the break, uh, but then you get into the, you know, the situation of, you know, a team sending someone over to, you know, uh, to their national team and then they getting injured there and not being, you know, available for the final. Yeah. I say, get it all done, get it all done beforehand, you know, really, really, uh, 
you know, I don't know. It, it really builds to such a such a peak and a crescendo before that international break that it makes no sense to stop it. And if if the rumors are true that they're looking at a way to, uh, you know, advance the way the playoffs are and it's going to go to single game elimination, you know, you could get all of it done before the uh, the international break. You absolutely can. Well, from from looking at Eric Winalda's, uh a lot of his tweets, and he answers a lot of questions, which is pretty cool. He, he, he takes a lot of questions from fans. And one of the things he does mention repeatedly is about um, moving the the MLS calendar to be with with you know the 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 regular calendar uh, across the rest of the world. Yeah, the FIFA calendar. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it's things like that. I see, you know, I just see someone I, uh, from U.S. Soccer uh, for, for someone who's trying to get to the uh, get the presidency of U, of the U.S. Soccer Federation, and it makes me. You know, I'm like, it feels like th- that that's the, the the candidate that seems like is interested in in you know putting forth a lot of change and uh, and, and gets me excited about uh, about what what a potential presidency from Eric Ronaldo would look like. Um, I don't know exactly what the other candidates are all suggesting. Uh, there was an interesting article uh, from. Uh, sock takes uh, our, our homie uh, Nipun Chopra. Yeah, he he uh, sock takes. He, he's uh, uh, one of the uh, founders or writers. I don't. I'm not exactly. I don't remember exactly. But he he did write an article about. He did speak to Sunil Galati and he reached out to him and asked him uh, if he was running for uh, if he was running again for 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 the presidency. And he said that he wouldn't comment on it. And the when when is when is it um it's like in february right when they vote or like yeah the vote is the vote is coming in february so by him saying i'm not going to comment probably just means he's not going to he's not he's probably not running so that, i mean but he up. has he has all the paperwork or what all those like uh you know uh i guess uh not recommendations endorsements he has all the endorsements already he got everything he needed before the trinidad match okay so, I mean, he doesn't actually, he kind of, there's no such thing as whether he's running or not. He kind of is already eligible and has everything he needs to do. And remember, he doesn't actually have to campaign to the fans. It's, it's like a, it's like weird. It's like a, the states, the state groups, uh, the state soccer federations all have to like endorse you and vote for you. And uh, part of it is MLS part of, there's like one guy who represents the fans. Uh, it's like a bunch of chair people, that, you know, Anthony, Pre, Anthony Precourt, Anthony Precourt decides. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And he has uh, the fans' interest at heart. Uh, you know, he cares more about what the fans think. And when I say the fans, I mean specifically the ones in Austin. <laughs> Good people, the people out in Austin. They're not uh, bad. <laughs> uh, so, it, yeah, it does. Uh, it, it, there's a lot going on uh, with that. And it, it is kind of interesting to see where, uh, you know, because whoever is the, the next president of U.S. soccer, I, I, I feel like, uh, and this is very, my broad generalization from like their their Twitter handles or whatever their, their Twitter timelines. And I see the people I see the most talking about this stuff, and who, and who I see are most spoken about are Kyle Martino and Eric Winalda. And Winalda seems to be like the the I don't know, like the I, I don't know. Progressive doesn't seem like the right word. I mean, he just seems like a, a, a the guy who's who, who is saying the things the fans want to hear. Yeah, he's more of like the fan's choice, and Cal Martino, I think, represents a lot of things remaining the same, and a lot of people believe that he's been, and I think Eric Winald has actually come out and said this, but he feels that he's been propped up by uh, the establishment to, uh, you know, sort of usurp or, you know, cut cut down on... um, Eric Winalda's uh, a reach or, uh, you know, I guess ability yeah. to influence. And it wouldn't surprise me if that was the case. I think Kyle Martino's a likable guy. You know, I, there's yeah, nothing about like, him. He's cool. Galati. He's uh, you know, he's just like a uh, Galati with a, with a better haircut. Like you know? he's like one of those like youth ministers, you know, he's like, Hey man, <laughs> everything's cool. Like I dress like, Jay, just like you guys, none of us do drugs. Right. <laughs> Also, that is the most important thing. You got to do everything you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, you know, this party is late. None of us are having premarital sex, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 that's my uh, a little bit of my concern. I think uh, I, I, I do find Cal Martino charming as a 
as a pundit, as a person, he seems like a cool dude. Uh, but but when it comes to just the, the things that I want to hear about where, you know, uh, about uh, Major League Soccer and American Soccer sort of getting kind of uh, in line and, and being able to compete with other countries, wow, Eric Ronaldo seems like he, he, he's, uh, he's my Bernie Sanders. He's telling me, you know, everybody goes to college for free. You, uh, med- medicine, med- I got it for you. It's in my pocket. You, here, you're telling me you're, pills. you're a, you're a, you're a Winalda boy, a bro, a Winalda bro? <laughs> uh, Winalda bro. Yeah, I think Winalda so. Bro? Yeah. <laughs> Look, so, I, I like, I like the fact that I, I don't know how much of that he can implement, but, um, cause I feel like the moment he steps into office, if he does win and he's like, I think we should go to the FIFA calendar. I think MLS is like, well, here's a couple lawsuits to keep you busy. <laughs> But, uh, you know, and I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sold on the idea of, you know, a winter schedule just because I'm not sure I really want to go, uh, to Yankee stadium uncovered in the, in the winter in February. Um, yeah, sure. so yeah, I mean, just my thing. Um, but look, if it's, if that's something that happens, go for it. But yeah, I get your point. I think he is, uh, I think he represents at least what the fans are sort of clamoring for, you know, some of those changes, which, you know, to be honest, I, you know, as much as I really enjoyed Dave Sarakin's interview that he did with us, some of the things he, one or two things that he referenced, um, I don't completely agree with. I don't know that that was the right time or we had enough time to really cover them. Um, but you know, the thing with, uh, we shouldn't blow this up, blah, blah, blah. And then he mentioned that, uh, needs to figure out why there's more foreigners playing in MLS. I personally don't think that foreigners are ever the issue. It's, you know, American players are becoming better players because of guys like Romeo Kyoto and Albert Elise and Joseph Martinez and, Mar- uh, you know, Almirong and David Villa. You know what I mean? I don't think those are those are, American players and youth players are becoming better because those players are in this league, not vice yeah, versa. I, um, yeah, I, I guess I, I didn't take it as he was saying uh, that he had an issue with the amount of opportunities that American players we're getting. I, I took it as that because the quality of the 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 American the the foreign players is so high, it it might be a it might be a little challenging for the American players to get like playing time. Well, see, I uh, took it as him sort of, um, you know, uh, I guess mirroring or uh, repeating the sentiments from Bruce Arena, who said something similar. Um, so maybe I'm wrong. I think there's only one way to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, he's got to come back I, I, on the pod. I, yeah, that's, that's the only way to get it. Uh, and it went so well. I'm sure you would. You know what? Actually, back. why don't we just go to California and hang out with him? You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's interesting that you say that though. But I, I guess I, I it, when he started talking about it, I, I initially felt like he was gonna because look, he was Bruce Arena's assistant for a long time. That's his friend. I mean, he's not right. gonna. Of course, they're going to have kind of similar uh, opinions and similar mindsets. Uh, but I, I think what he was saying wasn't as uh, uh, as sort of rigid as what Bruce Arena said about just sort of the foreign players. I, I, I think there is an understanding that, yes, it, it, it's like uh, uh, the rising tide lists all boats. Uh, but if, if the quality of the coaching at a youth level is not – up to par to some of the foreign players that are coming into the league, then you're going to have the issue where like, look, if, if, if we can get a guy from, uh, you know, from Guatemala or get, or, or, or pick someone from the Academy, but the guy from Guatemala is, is, you know, is clearly better then it. Maybe it's not really worth it to bring this uh, kid up from, from the Academy. I think that's, that's the kind of, point he was trying to make i think he was just making the point that Concacaf is getting better so mls has to catch up and yeah just i mean look i i i could see that point um i took it differently so I, you, next you, time we talk to him uh, we'll confirm yeah like dave tarik is saying build the wall he's yeah. clearly spreading the xenophobia yeah. i don't think that's what it was actually <laughs> we let that be known that we do not believe that exactly so uh, so yeah, so the the the, the second legs uh, of both these uh, matches are going to be next week. On uh, one is on Wednesday, November 29th. Uh, the other is on uh, Thursday, November 30th. 
Yep. So after after uh, those two legs, we will final. Oh well, after after the 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 first match after Wednesday, we will know where the MLS uh, Cup final will be, and most likely going to be uh, Toronto again. Uh, but this time, we're going to be well well prepared. Uh, foot warmers. Uh, we're going to be uh, you know covered. Uh, you know, I think in a in a just a full. Uh, onesie and just a big old North Face onesie. I'm just bringing uh, a sleeping bag that was built for <laughs> Bear Grylls, <laughs> and I'm just gonna uh, cut a hole at the top so I can look out at it, and I'll do that. Uh, so regardless of where the final is held, we will have a good time. We will be there, uh, and we'll try to have as much fun as we did last year. So it's gonna be pretty exciting. So. Um, I think that's it, Alexis. Anything yeah. else you uh, we think you think we didn't mention? No, other than uh, happy Thanksgiving to uh, all of our uh, listeners. Uh, hopefully you yeah. enjoy it, and uh, hopefully you get to spend some time with your families. Uh, I know that's what I'm doing. Um, other than that, you know, whatever. Let's increase this blood pressure a little bit more. <laughs> sure, this is the the one time it's allowed. Also, Alexis may not be alive for next week's show. So yeah, I am uh, a little loopy, if you haven't told by in this third segment. Uh, uh, post-surgery, I think I did pretty good. This is how much I care about the fans. Not only did I literally go from the surgery room directly to a radio studio to do the Cooligans podcast, but then I went home, I napped, and I got I watched the games, and I stayed up. This is now 1243 in the morning, and I'm still up when I should be resting on doctor's orders to do yeah. this podcast, because that's how much I care about you guys. That's right. Uh, thank you for staying up. Uh, hopefully one day you'll be able to get it up. All right. All right. We're hey. having a good time. <laughs> I'm going to go cry into a pillow. <laughs> uh, again, yeah, we did talk about it in the first segment. If you want to know what happened, just talk to Alexis. He's, yeah. uh, yeah, that's, that's his business. Nobody else's. Oh, my only job here is to make fun of his genitals yeah. <laughs> yeah well well whatever's left on me part of it is in a bag traveling to a lab um i i do want to say uh yes i do want to uh, reiterate happy thanksgiving uh to everyone listening this uh this year has been uh grateful uh I, we have been so grateful to, to you guys listening it's been awesome for us i mean from literally from january 1st uh to right now uh, the the number of listeners has like almost tripled. It's been crazy. Um, so we're so happy that people are listening, that people are into it, uh, and and I'm I'm just uh, glad that week after week people are like uh, they, they they keep us accountable to uh, trying to help people like enjoy your week, and and that means a lot to us, and and we're happy we can be a part of of your lives. Uh, and your weeks and, 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 and make a thing that we enjoy and that we love and we could share it uh, with you guys. So uh, sincerely, thank you very much. So I do hope you have a happy Thanksgiving and, uh, and, and yeah, and 20, the rest of 2017 is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the final MLS cup final is going to be a lot of fun in 2018. We have so many awesome things planned uh, and it's just going to get better going forward. Yeah. And if I wasn't on so much brain medication, I would have been that sentimental as well. <laughs> So I second everything Christian just said. Yeah, you on oxy right now, dog. I'm definitely not doing the oxy though. I'll tell you that. I'll be out here floating. Yeah, yo, let's go. If you, all the pills you don't sell, let's just go to Staten Island and sell those on the corner, man. We'll make our money back. Are you kidding me? We'll be. Oh my god, the quality of our videos will go up so much. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you again. Uh, for listening. Uh, we appreciate it very much. I hope you had a good time. Uh, thank you again, Dave Sarakin, for being on the show. Uh, yeah, and, and hopefully we can get, we can get more uh, big uh, guests like that. And that was really, really exciting for us. So, uh, none, yeah, again, none of that could have happened without your help your, the, from the listeners. So you guys are the absolute best. Again, my name is Christian Polanco. My name is Alexis Guerreros. And together. What are we? The, the Cooligans! Cooligans!